How's it going everyone? Pop-Tart here. Welcome back to the Our Team channel. Today, I'm going to be showing you how to build the Airbus A320-200 in 1.5 to 1 scale. The A320 is a mid-capacity narrow-body airliner. It serves as the base variant for the A320 family, one of the most popular airliner families in the world. Over 4,000 A320s are in active service, and that's not counting the other members. Now, you probably know that we already have an A320 tutorial on our channel. In fact, it was one of our first, and is currently our most popular video on the channel to date but unfortunately it is by now massively outdated. It used incorrect dimensions for the fuselage, and in the many years since then our detailing styles have vastly improved. So, last year we rebuilt the A320 from scratch, and you might have seen this in our recent JetBlue retro livery showcase. So, this is the new tutorial that will replace our old one going forwards. As for our configurations for this aircraft, we have both engine options available for the A320, the IAE V2500, and the CFM 56 5B including its older variant, the CFM 56-5A. We also have both wingtip options, the classic wingtip fences, and the newer sharklets. Additionally, if you'd like, you can also use this tutorial to build the A320-100 instead of the 200. The 100 was the original version, and the upgraded 200 featured the addition of the wingtip fences. Just be aware that it is very rare compared to the 200, as only 21 100s were ever built before the 200 was made standard. One final note for the 100 as well, if you are building that, you'll want to use the CFM 56 5A engines, not the 5B or the IAEs, as it was only ever delivered with the CFM 56 5A. Finally, for the landing gear, we have both the standard single main landing gear, as well as the double bogey main landing gear. These were developed exclusively for Indian Airlines to allow it to operate into airfields with weaker pavement, the fleet was later transferred to Air India when they emerged, but no other airline operated this variant. Nonetheless, we have it built, and we'll be covering it at the end of this tutorial if you'd like. So, that's it for our configuration options here. As we progress through the tutorial, we'll break off into separate sections where those different options will be built, so you'll probably want to figure out ahead of time what you'd like for your aircraft. If you're building a replica of a real aircraft, you can select those based on what options the operator used, or if you're just building for fun, you can select which you liked most based on the preview close-ups shown. So, as I mentioned, this is in 1.5 to 1 scale, meaning that every 1 meter in real life is equivalent to 1.5 blocks exactly. If you are building an airport project or something in this scale, this will be perfectly to scale with all of our other 1.5 to 1 aircraft on the channel. Now, before we get started, as always, this build does make use of our very own custom AeroTeam texture pack. A download link to the latest version of this pack can be found in the description below if you don't have it already. Now, if you are stuck using the default pack, if you're following along on console or something, I will always do my best to show you how to go about building this in default, but please do keep in mind that I highly recommend using the Aeroteam pack instead if you can, as it'll look much better. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get going on this tutorial. Alright, so first things first, here's some dimensions for you to help you figure out where you want to put this. This aircraft is 57 blocks long, 51 blocks across with the wingtip fences, or 53 blocks across with the sharklets and 18 blocks tall from the base of the landing gear to the tip of the vertical stabilizer. So just keep that all in mind as you're getting started. Now, as for our materials, here in the Aeroteam pack we're using the wool material, coupled with the purple stairs and slabs for the smooth and shiny white coloration for the aircraft. If you are building in default, you'll probably want to use quartz or smooth quartz instead, so just use that instead of wool whenever I'm building. For the purpose of this tutorial, I'll be referring to these as the wool stairs and slabs, but again, that's the purple stairs and slabs here in the Aeroteam pack. Anyways, with that all out of the way, let's get started on the fuselage. Alright, so for layers 1 and 2 here, if you are building this landed on the ground, as I am here, you'll be wanting to start 4 blocks off the ground, with a 3 block gap in between, 1, 2, and 3, just like this. If you're building this in flight, then this obviously isn't something you can have to worry about, and you can just start wherever you'd like, but please do keep in mind that 3 block spacing otherwise. So, we'll be starting here with a single wool top slab, we can clear out these temporary blocks now, from this wool top slab we have a second one going back right here, and then an upside down wool stair facing forwards, like so. Out to either side of this here we have a wool top slab, with one more wool top slab going forwards from this on both sides. Next, back from the center right here, we're going to place two quartz half slabs going back, so that's one and two right there. This will be starting off the gear door for the nose landing gear. Now, if you are already building the fuselage out of quartz here, you'll probably want to use either cobblestone or something like uh, polished diorite to accent out from the fuselage for these extra details here, whenever I'm using quartz. But we have these two quartz half slabs here. 
Next we'll place a wolf full block out to the sides of the second one back right here, just like this. And then another upside down wolf stair facing forwards, forwards from both of those, like so. Next, we're going to use a world edit trick to trick a stone button into staying on the side of this upside down stair right here for a static port on the side of the nose right here. So this will require the world edit mod to be installed. So for this, we're going to place a wolf full block, or just a temporary block that is, out to the side of that wool upside down stair right there. We'll place a stone button on the side, grab a stick, or any old item, type slash repl zero to switch this over to the replace tool. We can select this stone button by left clicking on it, and then paste over the temporary block by right clicking, like so. Now, if you don't have access to the world edit mod, you can, in recent versions of Minecraft, use the debug stick as an alternative by placing a uh, temporary block on another side right here, placing a stone button there, and then using the facing property of the debug stick to rotate that button around to uh, stick on the uh, stair right there. However, we don't have access to the debug stick on the server here, so I can't demonstrate its usage for you. If you're familiar with it already, then that's great. You can use that for any of these tricks here or you can find a decent enough guide online elsewhere. But if you don't have access to either of those, you can just leave those little details out if you can't include them. They're not too crucial to the overall build, but they do help it immensely, so I do highly recommend that you include them if you can. So with that, I'll get my replace tool back here. I do have to retype that command since it has been over two months since I recorded the last clip. Whoops. So I'll just paste that stone button in right there on top of that wool stair. And we have the same thing going on on the right side of the aircraft right there. So, temporary block out to the side of that stair, grab the button, and paste over. Alright, next up here, we'll be placing three more blocks going back from both of these wool blocks right here to make them a row of four in total. So that's one there already, two, three, and four, like so. Then we have one there on the right side, two, three, and four. Next, we'll grab a target block and place one of these going back from each of those wool blocks right there. This is for a set of red markings calling out the static ports on the side of the fuselage right here. Then going back from this here, we have another six blocks of wool. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And one, two, three, four, five, and six. Like so. Next, dropping down below here, behind where we have these two quartz half slabs right there, we're going to grab the birch trapdoor. We're going to skip a block going back from this right there, and we'll place a birch trapdoor in the top half right there. Now, in the aeroteam pack, as you can see here, this is a wool trapdoor texture. In default, use an iron trapdoor instead to blend, and then maybe cover it off with a block of wool in the center, uh, so that it doesn't have the holes showing through. But once we have that trapdoor right there, this is going to be a row of nine in total. So that's one already, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Now above this right here, we're going to place a birch trapdoor on the bottom half of the next block up, and then on the underside of this face right there, we're going to place a lever, flitch facing backwards. This will be for an antenna on the underside of the forward fuselage here. Then out to the sides right here, we're going to skip the first trapdoor right there, and then place one more out to the side of the second trapdoor back. And this one will be a row of ten in total. So we have one there already, that's going to be... 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, sticking one past. Same thing on the right side, skip that first trapdoor, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10, right there. And then coming back up to the wool again right here, uh, where we have this row of four wool right here initially, skipping this first wool block, out to the side of the second wool block right there, we'll place another trapdoor on the top half right there, and this one will also be a row of 10 going back. So that's one there already. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. That should come flush with that wool block there. Same thing on the right side. Skip that first wool block. Second one back right there. One dropped on the top half. Then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Like so. Now, next up here, I have made a slight mistake, but it's an easy correction, so I, I don't think I'll worry about re-recording the whole thing here. But where we have these six wool blocks going back behind that target block right there, there's actually supposed to be a cargo door on the right side here, so it does get asymmetrical. So we're going to grab the block of quartz, and behind this target block there, we have three blocks of quartz going back. So that's one, two, and three in place of the wool block there. That's a little bit embarrassing, I've never done that before, I made a whole call out of my notes and everything, but I of course still blew right past it. But now that we have that in place, we can continue with the wing bots next. So to start this off, we're going to grab the birch trapdoor, and place one more birch trapdoor in between the last two of those ten right there just to close that off there. Then we have a row of three wool top slabs across the center right here. One, two, and three. 
Next, we're going to have a row of five across the center right here. So one, two, three, four, and five, sticking out one block to either side. Then we'll place just one single wool top slab in the center with a trapdoor on the top half off to either side and another wool top slab right there. That'll form two inlets on the underside of the um, wing box right here. Then we have five wool top slabs going across the center. One, two, three, four, and five right there. Next, going back from the center, we're going to place a full block of polished granite for the red beacon light on the underbelly right here. Then two wool top slabs out to either side there. Next, we have three rows of five going back. So that's one, two, and three, like so. Then we're going to switch over to the quartz slabs. We have five quartz top slabs across the center. One, two, three, four, and five. One single quartz top slab in the center right there. Two wool top slabs out to either side. And then another row of five of the quartz top slabs there. This will start out the outline of the gear doors on the underbelly right here. Then we have five wool top slabs going back. Well, not going back, but across the center this time. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And then three across the center right here. One, two, and three. And another set of three across the center, like so. And then popping up to our main layer here, behind this uh, trapdoor on the outer layers right here, we're going to have ten full blocks of wool going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And same thing over here as well. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Then a single quartz half slab on the bottom half behind both of those right there. Then four blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, and four. And one, <laughs> two, three, and four. And then on the sides of this here, stipping that very last block right there, on the second block forwards, we're going to place a stone button out to the side right there. Same thing on the right side. So stipping the last block, one block forwards, stone button there. Next, we'll circle back up to the um, gear doors right here for some quick detailing on the inside. So for the gear well right here, we're going to forwards from this row of five quartz top slabs right there. We'll place three wool across the front right there to close that off, and then three wool across the back right there, just like this. So you have a three by three space to work with. Then on the forward and rear faces right here, on the center block, we're going to place a stone brick wall, like so. And then out to the sides right here, a crimson fence on all four corners, just like this. And then across the center right here, three iron trapdoors on the top half. That'll finish off the detailing for the inside of the gear well right there. And as you'll notice here, here in the Aero Team pack, the crimson fence is a stone texture for the uh, fence right here. Just use a birch fence instead for default, as it'll be the closest thing to kind of a whitish or gray, even though it's tan. It'll still work mostly all right. And then for one final thing with this, if you have access to world edit, we can flush these fences off a little bit more. So for this, we're going to place a fence just anywhere, then two more out to either side, and then one more going forwards from it like this. We'll grab that center one with the replace tool there, and then paste it over these two forward ones right there. That'll just kind of connect those off to the sides and make the paneling a little bit more detailed and realistic. And then for the rear ones, we'll do kind of the same thing. We'll clear out that forward connection and instead add a rear connection right there. I have to replace that fence there to get it to update. We'll select that center one again, and we can clear those all out, and then paste over the rear two fences, like so. And again, if you don't have access to world edit, you can just leave the fences as they were. But with that, that is the gear well complete there. So I'll throw those all away quickly, and we can continue on. So back from both of these full blocks of wool right here, we're going to place an upside down wool stair facing backwards, like this, with a block of wool in towards the center. Next, only on the right side of the aircraft here, we're going to grab our full block of quartz and place a block of quartz back from that wool full block right there, with a quartz top slab out to the right side, then two more blocks back from that full block right there. This will put in place our aft cargo door right here, which I finally remember this time, as opposed to forgetting it on the forward side. And with that right there, we can place three more blocks of wool going back. So that's one, two, and three. And then a single full block of quartz right there for the bolt cargo door at the rear. On the left side here, that's just going to be eight blocks of wool going back, counting that one we already put in place there to close off that quartz stair, or uh, wool stair. So we have one there already, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, like so. Then we'll grab the trapdoors here, out to the sides, back from this quartz top slab right there. We're going to place four uh, birch trapdoors on the top half. One, two, three, and four. On the left side there, we have to put in place a wool top slab, and then four more wool trapdoors going back. So that's one, two, three, and four. And before we continue on here, to seal off the underside, 
what we're going to do is, let's see, we'll place a trapdoor on the bottom half of that center block right there uh, to close off that space. Then we'll grab a lever and place another lever flipped facing backwards right there for another antenna on the underbelly right here. Then, back from this here, we have five wool trapdoors in the center. So that's one, two, three, four, and five on the top half uh, below that block layer that is, just like this. Then now to either side of that uh, lever right there, underneath the wool block right there, we have another five trapdoors going back. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. And on the left side, one, two, three, four, and five, like so. Next, we're going to place two bottom half trapdoors in between these two blocks right here. So that's one and two, like so. Then a single half slab on the bottom half going back from that right there. Next, uh, out to either side here, from these full blocks, we're going to place three uh, top slabs on the top half right here. So that's one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. And then back from the s well, in towards the center right here to close this off, we have one top slab right there, then two more going back to make this a row of three. So that's one, two, and three, like so. And with that, that is everything for layers one and two. Alright, so for layer three, we're going to be starting from this four most wool top slab from the previous layer right here. We're going to skip a block forwards from that right there, and place a wool full block right there. Next, we'll place a wool block out at an angle, going back right here, with a stone button out to either side right there. Next, we have another target block going back from the wool block, with another stone button on its face right there, for another set of static ports, just as we did down there on the side of the fuselage. Next, we're going to grab the light blue glazed terracotta. And in the Euro team pack here, this is a half-white, half-black utility. It's on one of the four rotations. So depending on where you're building your aircraft, it might be somewhere else uh, on one of these rotations. But uh, two of the rotations are with smooth stone, two of them are with wool. So find the one with wool on the bottom half right here, which in my case is facing down the aircraft like this, and we'll place that going back from the target blocks right there. Now. If you are in default without that utility, you can just use a full block of wool in its place right there. But what this will do is give us a black surface on the top half right there for the interior of the cockpit later. So, once we have that, out to either side here, we'll place a wool top slab, like this, with a solid block of wool going back right there, and a stone button out to either side right there. This will be for another set of pitot tubes. I actually don't believe I mentioned this on the previous layer because I was worried about the uh, world edit descriptions, but that right there is a pitot tube as well. So that's what those two are for in that little vertical stack there. So, going back from this, only on the right side here, not the left, again we have that asymmetry with the cargo door, we have five blocks of wool going back, uh, not including that one we already placed there, so five blocks back from the stone button, so that's one, two, three, four, and five. Then we have three blocks of quartz going back, so that's one, two, and three, like so. Then 19 blocks of wool going back, so that's one, two, three, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and 19. Then right here, 3 blocks of quartz, 1, 2, and 3, to line up with the aft cargo door. Then 3 blocks of, uh, well, 3 wool blocks going back, 1, 2, and 3. And a single quartz full block right there to finish off the bolt cargo door. Then we'll just place one uh, wool full block right in there. Now on the left side right here, we're going to place just 5 blocks of wool going back. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. Now the left side of that fifth block right there, we're going to place another stone button right there. This will be for an angle of attack vein that's only on the left side of the aircraft right there. And then going back right here, we have 30 blocks of wool. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty, twenty-one, twenty-two, twenty-three, twenty-four, twenty-five, twenty-six, twenty-seven, twenty-eight, twenty-nine, and thirty. That'll bring you flush in line right here. Next, going back, we're going to place two wool top slabs, so that's one and two, one and two. In towards the center, to close this off right here, we have three blocks of wool, sticking one past, so that's one, two, and three, and one, two, and three right there. Now on the right side only, we have a single uh, wool stair facing backwards right here. On the left side, that's just going to be another block of wool right there. Then we can place one more block of wool in the center to close that off. That'll be for a small vent on the right side of the tail cone right there. Then back from both of these right here, we have two wool top slabs, so that's one and two, one and two. In the center right here, we have one more block of wool to finish off that layering there. Then an upside down quartz stair facing towards the front right there for another antenna. And then a single uh, wool top slab going back from that right there. And that will finish off layer three. Alright, so for layer four here, 
We'll be starting right on top of this full block of wool from the previous layer, with just another single wool block right there in line with it to finish off the nose curvature right there. We've now reached the very tip of the nose. Next, going back right here, out to the sides, we have two blocks of wool going back on both sides, and then four blocks of wool going back out to the sides. So that's one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, like so. Now we'll grab the quartz stairs. Back right here, we have an upside down quartz stair facing in towards the center on both sides, like so, to start off the forward doors. Then we have four blocks of wool going back, so that's one, two, three, and four. And on the side of this right here, we're going to place another stone button, like so, for another angle of attack vein. Then we have four blocks of wool on the right side right here, one, two, three, and four. And this time we have that same angle of attack vein on the right side as well, so this one is symmetrical. So, stone button right there. Next, two blocks of wool going back, one and two. This time we'll grab a torch and place a torch out to the side right there for the wing light. Now in the RT impact here, this is a custom model for the torch like this, so that's a flat uh, light panel. In default, you'll probably want to instead uh, either use a uh, stone button or an, uh, an upside down wool stair like this, so you have a little bit of an indentation or something. Something that's, that's the indication of a panel light like that, rather than just a stick sticking out of the side of the aircraft like a torch would be. But in the RT impact here, we are using that torch model like this. So once you have your wing light in place, we'll do the same thing on the left side. So two blocks going back and a torch right there. Next we have seven blocks of wool going back. One, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. With another upside down quartz stair facing in towards the center. One right there. A single block of quartz and another upside down quartz stair right there. Or single block of wool rather, my apologies. This will start off the two overwing exits right here. Then seven blocks of wool on the right side, going past that, um, or back from the block with the torch right there. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Quartz upside down stair, wool full block right there, and another quartz upside down stair there. Next, we're going to place 20 blocks of wool going back. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, and twenty. And one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Then going back from this here, we'll grab the quartz slab. We have a single quartz top slab going back from this right there on both sides, and a quartz half slab in towards the center, like so, to start off the aft doors right there. Now, this will be covered in the interior, but we can just get it right now, uh, just to cover this off. So we'll grab a smooth stone full block and place that right on top of that upside down, or that um, uh, wool stair right there for the vent just so it's all flushed off from the outside with no holes showing through the aircraft. Again, we'll continue on all that with the interior when we get to that at the end of the tutorial, but let's just get that in place right there so it's all sealed off. So, now that we have those uh, two rear doors in place right there, we're started at least on this layer. Back from the uh, lower half slabs in the center right there, we'll place three blocks of wool going back from both of those. That's one, two, and three. And one, two, and three right there. In towards the center, we'll join this up, uh, those up with a wool full block right there to close that off from the underside, then a second block of wool going back right there. Next, back from all three of these right here, we have two wool top slabs. So that's one and two, one and two, and one and two. And with that, that is everything for layer four. Alright, so for layer five here, we'll be starting from the wool full block from the previous layer. We'll be dropping a wool half slab one block back from that, just like this with a black wool full block behind it. This will be starting off the cockpit glass here. Off to the other side of that black wool, we have a wool half slab, like this. And then behind this here, we have another one of these same light blue glazed terracottas we used before. This will again be placed with the black wool on the top half, like this, and the, the white wool on the bottom half. One back from each of those half slabs right there. And this is because the cockpit glass here is between layers in 1.5 to 1 scale. So we have the black wool on the top half there, and there will be a black wool slab in the next layer up to finish off the single full block spacing. Now, if you don't have access to the ROT impact, those two can stay black wool full blocks because we'll be placing another half slab out to the sides right here, so you can leave that as a black wool there. That white there is just for the interior. However, we'll be placing another one out to the side right here again, and this one will be blending with the exterior right here. So, for default, what you can do is make that a nether brick top slab instead, like this with a white wool full block in towards the center, like so. So you'll have that kind of indentation right there in the outside, and you'll lose some space on the interior of the cockpit, unfortunately. But it's the best that can be done in uh, 
uh, vanilla, that is, unless you'd like to leave it as a black wool full block, but that will make some inaccurate um, sizing and shaping on the outside here. So this is what I would recommend. Otherwise, if you have the aerotech pack here, well, we have that slab out to the side there and another light blue glazed terracotta going back right there. So we'll do the same thing on the right side here. So we'll slab there and a light blue glazed terracotta going back. Next, we have two blocks of wool going back from both of these right there. Can throw those away. So that's one and two, and one and two. And now for the doors here, we're going to place a quartz stair facing towards the rear of the aircraft, just like this on both sides, to give the indentation of the window in the door right there. And we'll place a single block of wool going back from that right there. Next, we can use world edit to round off the curvature of the door from the inside a little bit. So for this, we're going to place a quartz stair just anywhere, facing in towards the inside of the aircraft like this, then one more facing to the rear of the aircraft behind it. We'll select that one with the replace tool and paste it over the stair right there. So you have just the forward right connection on that stair right there. So this will give both the window space in the corner right there and also round it off from the inside a little bit, slimming it down more. Again, if you don't have access to uh, world edit, you can just leave it as it is. This is just a little tiny trick to make things a little bit nicer. So same thing on the left side there, stair facing in towards the center, stair behind it. Select the corner stair and paste over, like so. So once we have the doors in place there, it is now time to put in the windows. So for this, in 1.5 to 1 scale here, we're using upside down stairs for a quarter block space for the windows here. But for this, the windows uh, on this forward section of the fuselage here are upside down stairs facing forwards. So to make things a little bit easier for ourselves, I'm just going to grab a temporary block here. We're going to place 12 temporary blocks going back right here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Behind this, we have an upside down quartz stair facing backwards like this to uh, finish off that overwing exit right there. And we can clear out those temporary blocks. Now we have 12 upside down wool stairs facing towards the front of the aircraft. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Like so. Same thing on the left side here. So you can count out those uh, 12 temporary blocks, but there's also the hope where we get it right here. So we can just line that up with the right side there, upside down stair facing towards the rear of the aircraft right there in quartz. Then with wool now, 12 upside down wool stairs facing towards the front. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, and 12. Like so. Now to finish off the overwing exits here, we have a full block of wool going back right there, then an upside down port stair facing forwards right there. So it's a little bit of a wider spacing between those two windows in the overwing exits. And now for our next set of windows, these are again upside down stairs facing forwards. So we'll switch over to a temporary block and we'll place 18 temporary blocks going back. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. We'll place two blocks of wool going back from that right there. Then we can clear out those 18 temporary blocks. And now we have 18 wool stairs upside down facing forwards. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Like so. Now for the left side, I mean, you can count it out if you want to, but we've already counted it out twice there. So we just have those two wool full blocks right there. Uh, forwards from the aft door in line with the two from the right side. And then 18 upside down wool stairs facing forwards. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. Like so. Now to finish off the tail cone for this layer, behind the two sets of wool uh, right here, we're going to place an upside down stair facing, not an upside down stair, a regular quartz stair facing backwards right there. And one more on the right side, with a block of wool going back from both of those right there. Next we can use some more welded to finish off these doors here. So out to the sides of these ones, we're going to place a temporary block there, stone button on the side, select that stone button and paste over, like this. Same thing on the right side, stone button there, and paste over. And now we can corner these stairs off in the exact same fashion as we did up at the front. So, stair facing towards the inside, stair facing backwards to get the forward left connection and paste that one over the left door. Then same thing on the right side there with the right connection and paste over. So. Next, we'll drop in a block right here from these wool full blocks. We'll place three blocks of wool going back. One, two, and three. And one, two, and three there. Now with the quartz stairs, we'll place a regular quartz stair facing towards the outside right there. And then one more facing forwards behind that right there. Oops. Uh, might have to update that there. 
the, the server can be a bit funky with block updates sometimes, so that won't happen for you, of course, but uh, yeah. Same thing on the right side here, so stair facing to the right, and stair facing forwards behind that right there. This will be for the stabilizer trim on the horizontal stabilizers there. Then behind this here, we'll be placing a row of three wool across the center, like this. Then we have a quartz half slab in the center right there, with a wool top slab on either side. Underneath that quartz slab, we're going to place a lever flipped facing backwards for another antenna there. Then two quartz top slabs going back from this here. So that's one and two. And with that, that is everything for layer five. All right, so for layer six here, we're going to be starting from the black wool full block from the previous layer. We're going to place a nether brick half slab on top of that right there, with a wool top slab behind it, like this. Out to either side there, another nether brick half slab, and another wool top slab back right there, on both sides. And then one more nether brick half slab out to the side of that. That'll finish off the cockpit glass there. Next, going back from those last half slabs, we have two blocks of wool on both sides, with a quartz full block behind both of those right there and a quartz top slab in towards the center to finish off the forward doors. Next we have 36 blocks of wool going back on both sides here. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Right there. That should land right in line with the aft doors right there. Then 36 blocks on the left. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, and 36. Next, we have a block of quartz going back right there from both of those rows. And this time, for the aft fuselage curvature, we have an upside down quartz stair instead of a top sled in towards the center right there to finish off the, those uh, doors right there. Next, a single wool half slab back from both of those, and then four blocks of wool going back in towards the center to close off that gap there. One, two, three, and four. And one, two, three, and four. Next, two full blocks of quartz going back. One and two, and one and two. Then two more wool blocks going back. One and two, and one and two. Next, in towards the center right here, three blocks of wool. One, two, and three. Then we're going to place a bubble coral fan on the rear right here. In the R-Team pack, this is a stone brick vertical slab like this for the APU exhaust right here. Now, two things to note with this. First of all, if you're without the R-Team pack, then you obviously won't have this, and you'll probably have to use a uh, stone brick wall instead in its place right here. It'll be a little bit funky in terms of the curvature, but it should still work kind of fine as giving that almost half block uh, size right there. We'll just have that bit of problem where it's kind of notched and tapered funnily like this, but it'll still give the impression of the APU exhaust. Now, if you do have access to these vertical slabs right here, the other thing to note is that this is a bubble coral fan. Not a dead bubble coral fan, but a regular coral fan. This means that in vanilla, these will dry out, out of the water. And unfortunately, this solid block of wool right here can't be waterlogged in any way because there's no sides of it that are covered to allow a stair or something to have a waterlogged feature there. So, on the server here, we use a plugin called Coral Stay that's available for Spigot to prevent uh, coral fans from drying out. Now, uh, so that's available if you are building on a server. Uh, if you're in single player, there's an equivalent plugin for Forge that is available as well. And if you're stuck without either of these, one more last resort thing you can try doing is placing a temporary block right there with a bubble coral fan just anywhere facing backwards. And then uh, with World Edit, make sure you're in slash slash fast mode. Select that um, vertical slab right there by left-clicking on it, and then paste over right there. That should hopefully get it to stay in place without any block updates, and we'll trick it into being frozen, kind of like all of these stairs and everything that we do along here, without updating and dying. However, I've had limited success with this depending on the game version in the past. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So again, there's the stone brick wall trick you can do if you absolutely can't use any of those. But this is what we're using on the server here. So. Once you have your APU exhaust in, in whatever way, there's one more thing to do right here. That's to place a stone button on the underside right here, aligned parallel with the aircraft, using World Edit. So just paste that over right there. Then, on the left side only, from these, uh, this row of three right there, from the foremost block, we're going to place a single stone button right there. And with that, that'll do it for layer six. 
Alright, so to cap off the fuselage now, we're going to build layers 7 and 8. For this, we'll start from the wool top slab from the previous layer right here, with a single wool half slab going back from it, like this. Next, we have a wool stair facing forwards, behind it right there, with another wool half slab out to either side of that stair. Then finally, one more wool stair facing forwards behind both of those slabs there, like this. Next, we'll switch over to the full full blocks, and going back from these now, from the center block only, we have 47 wool going back. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, and 47. That should land right in line with that uh, set of three from the previous layer right there. Next, we'll head back up to the front again, and going back from the stairs right here, we have 42 blocks. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. And same thing on the right side. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40, 41, and 42. Double check our count, that's all lining up perfectly. So, before we finish off that bit of the tail cone layering there, we're going to come all the way up to the front again, and we're going to put in place the top fuselage detailing. So, for this, we'll grab the uh, jungle buttons first right here. So, in the center row right here, from this very first wool full block there, we're going to place a jungle button lined parallel with the aircraft like this. Now, in the R-Team pack, the jungle button is a wool, a white wool texture, like this. In default, you can just use a stone button instead with all of these, but uh, this was closer to the uh, real aircraft detail. Now, we're going to place another one of these going back right there, so it's a row of two, like this. Next, we have a lever right there, flipped facing backwards. Then we're going to skip a block, and on this row next, we have a stone button on either side, skipping the center block right there, so it should be diagonal to the lever right there. And again, these will be parallel to the aircraft like this. Next, from this row here, not counting this row, we're going to skip three blocks going back. So that's one right there, two, and three. Then the fourth block here, we have a jungle button aligned parallel with the aircraft like this. Next, skip two blocks, one and two. On the third block here, another jungle button. Next, we're going to skip six blocks. So that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. And on the seventh block right here, a dark oak button aligned parallel with the aircraft. This is a red texture for the beacon light on the top of the aircraft right here. In default, just use an acacia button instead for a kind of orangish red uh, texture, but this is what we're using here in the air team pack. Then, we're going to skip two blocks going back right here, one and two. Now the third block, a birch trapdoor right there. Skip two blocks again, one and two. On the third block, another trapdoor. These are for some more antennas on the top of the fuselage right here. Then skip another two blocks, one and two. On the third block here, a lever flicked facing backwards. Now we're going to skip nine blocks going back. I'm going to grab some red concrete for this as a temporary block. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9. And then another lever right there, flipped facing backwards, like so. And we can clear out that temporary block now. As a final sanity check, we should have 6 blocks remaining before the end of the outer rows right there. So that's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. That's all lining up perfectly. And with that, the top fuselage layering is done. So to finish off the tail cone now, I can throw away all of these. We're going to place three blocks of, um, well, three wool half slabs going back from the outer layers right there. So that's one, two, and three, and one, two, and three. And then the center right there, two wool half slabs going back, one and two, like so. And with that, that is everything for the fuselage. All right, so next up here, we're going to be building the vertical stabilizer. So for this, we're going to come down to the very last wool full block in the center row of the previous layer right here. We're going to place three blocks of wool going up from this right here. So that's one, two, and three. Next, a wool top slab going back right there. 
Then three blocks of wool going up. One, two, and three. Next coming back a block here. Three blocks going up. One, two, and three. And then two blocks going forwards from the top block right there. One and two. Now before we continue right here, we can use another world edit trick. So for this, we're going to place a set of three temporary blocks behind that row of three right there. So that's one, two, and three. Underneath this here, we're going to place a stone button aligned parallel with the aircraft like this. We're going to select that one, clear that out, then paste it over all three of these temporary blocks. Now, for some reason, we have to do this very slowly with world edit, otherwise they'll break themselves. But we're going to place that uh, one, two, and three, like so. These are for the static wicks coming off of the vertical stabilizer right here. Then, uh, coming back to that set of two that we placed there, we're going to place two blocks of wool going down uh, forwards from this right here. So that's one and two, with a wool half slab forwards from that there. Now another wool full block underneath that half slab, another wool half slab going forwards, another full block of wool, and another half slab there. Next, we have one single block of wool right there going down, then one diagonal right there, two, and three, like this. That should connect right up there with the fuselage. Forwards from this, we're going to place a wool half slab, and then a birch trap door going forwards right there to round off the tiny little ventral strake on the vertical stabilizer here. Now we can just fill this entire thing in with the wool. So everything that's inside this outline here is just going to become white wool. And with that, that will finish off the vertical stabilizer. All right, so to put in the horizontal stabilizers here, we'll come to the stabilizer trim where we have this uh, set of two uh, quartz full blocks right there. From the foremost one, we're going to place a smooth stone slab going out to the side right there, with a regular stone slab forwards from it there. Next, the stone slab out to the side of that smooth stone slab there. Then up a slab layer, two slabs out to the side there. Then one slab going back. Then up a slab layer, two uh, st stone slabs out to the side right there. And then one single slab diagonal like so. Next, behind this here, we'll switch over to the stonebird slabs for the uh, elevator detailing on the trailing edge. So we have one stonebird slab behind that right there, then two more in towards the center, then one stonebird slab going in right there, then directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, we have two st uh, stonebird top slabs right there, and then in towards the center, two stonebird top slabs right there. That should connect up with the uh, wolf full block right there from the uh, second layer out of the fuselage. And now to fill all of this in, how our tutorials work is after we've created an outline like this to work with, we create layering outlines for each layer and then fill everything in. So for a stabilizer as small as this, we only have one layering outline to worry about right here. So from those last two stonebird slabs that we placed there, from the outermost one, we're gonna place a single smooth stone slab going forwards from that right there. That'll connect up with the stone slab right there from the leading edge and make a single continuous line outlining that layer right there. And the last layer outline right there is already complete for us because those two are in contact with each other, and that's the outer bounds of that layer. So once we have that, what we're going to do is everything inside the uh, outline of the wing itself and the outline of the next layer up is going to get filled in with the smooth stone slabs, just like this. Same thing for these bounds right here, and finally for this section there. So it should look just like that. Very simple for a stabilizer as small as this, but now you know kind of more of what to expect when we get to the wings themselves in a second. So, in this scale, the stabilizer is only a single slab layer thick all the way through, so we have nothing to worry about on the underside there. The very last thing for the uh, stabilizer here is to put in some more static widths. So for this, we can place three temporary blocks behind those three st uh, stonebird slabs right there. One, two, and three. Next, we'll place a stone button aligned parallel with the aircraft on top of one of these. We'll select that and then paste over all three of these right there. Now, if you don't have world edit for these ones, uh, unlike the vertical stabilizer, where it just wouldn't be possible to include them otherwise, what you can do is use a barrier block underneath these right here to put the buttons on top of them, like this, for all three of those there. So that's something a uh, workaround you can do without world edit, but this is what we're doing right here. So that's it for the horizontal stabilizer. We're just going to build the same thing on the right side of the aircraft. So, where we have those two uh, quartz full blocks right there, Smooth stone slab out to the side of the forwardmost one there. Stone slab forwards. Stone slab out to the side of that uh, smooth stone slab there. Then up a slab layer. Two stone slabs going out. Then one stone slab going out. Then up a slab layer. Two stone slabs going out right there. And then one slab, stone slab going out. 
Switch over to the Stonebird slabs, we have one directly uh, back from that right there, then two more directly in towards the center. Then we have one smooth, uh, not smooth stone, one Stonebird slab right there. Directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, two Stonebird top slabs right there. And then two Stonebird top slabs in towards the center again. For our only outline to worry about, again, for the outermost slab right there, smooth stone slab going forwards, and then fill this entire surface in with the smooth stone slab like so. Then the three static widths right here, paste those in, and the horizontal stabilizer is done. Alright, so for the wings here, we'll be coming down to the wing box on this outermost layer of the fuselage here, where the trapdoor layer turns into the full blots right here. We're going to count from this full block layer, one, two, three, and on the fourth full block right there, we're going to place a stone top slab right there. So again, that should leave you with a space of three right there, and in the block in front there, one exposed wall top slab below, just like this. Next, on top of this, we're going to place a spruce trapdoor, which in the R-Team texture pack here is a stone trapdoor texture. Just use an iron trapdoor in default. Then behind that trapdoor, we're going to place a smooth stone slab, and then a polished granite slab going back right there. This will be starting off the red markings for the overwing exits right here. In default, if you don't have uh, this red texture, you can use bricks instead for kind of a reddish hue to it. Most aircraft have black overwing exit markings, but Airbus uses red instead for their outlines and arrows. So, now that we have that there, we're going to place three quartz slabs going back. One, two, and three. Then drop down a slab layer right there, and with the smooth stone slab now, one, two, and three smooth stone top slabs going back, like so. Next, we're going to grab the white carpet, which I don't have in my inventory there, apologies, and we're going to place two of those on the forward two blocks of those three right there, leaving the rear one exposed. That'll just finish off the white markings down the center of that overwing exit path. So, now to continue on the bottom edge of this wing route right here, skipping that rearmost of the three uh, smooth stone slabs there, we're going to place two more half slabs going forwards, one and two, looking just like that. Then we're going to switch over to the stone burnt slabs for the gray marking this, down the center of the wing here. We're going to place four uh, stone burnt slabs here going forwards. One, two, three, and four. Then switch over to the smooth stone slab and one single smooth stone half slab right there. That should give you a shape looking just like this for the wing root outline. Next we're going to continue on with the leading edge outline. So coming down here to the stone at the very front of the wing, it's a stone color for the uh, slat detailing along the leading edge of the wing. So from that stone top slab right there, we're going to place two more going out to the side at an angle, just like this. On top of those two, another two spruce trapdoors. And then from the trapdoors here, up a slab layer from the previous half slabs, we're going to place two half slabs going out, just like this. Next, we're going to place just one half slab going out at an angle and up a half slab layer, so a top slab this time. Then we'll place a smooth stone full block going out to the side right here, directly out to the side this time. Now forwards from this, we're going to place some temporary blocks. So I'm going to use blue concrete, just so it stands out from the rest of the build. You can use whatever you like, as long as it, well, stands out from the rest of the build. But forwards from that smooth stone right there, we're going to place one temporary block and one more going down from it there. This is going to mark out the engine pylon, which we're going to get back to later once we finish the geometry of the wing. So, next, switching back to the stone slabs, we're going to place two stone slabs out at an angle right there. Then up a slab layer, two more half slabs going out. Then one half slab going out. Then two half slabs going out, right there. Next, up a slab layer, two half slabs going out. Two more half slabs going out. And then one half slab going out, right there. Next, directly out to the side this time, not going back, we have one half slab up a half slab layer, just like this then one half slab going out right there. That's the end of the slab detailing there, so we'll now switch over to the smooth stone slabs again. We're going to place one smooth stone slab directly out to the side, like this, and then one more out at an angle right there. Now, before we continue on here, we can put in a little bit more detailing. So, what we're going to do is place a temporary block out to the side of this uh, first smooth stone slab right there, and on its face we're going to place a jungle button, Select that with the Replace tool there, and paste over like this. Then on the forward edge of that smooth stone slab there, we're going to do the same with a dark oak button. 
and then paste that over right there. The red there is for the red nav light on the left side of the aircraft, and the white is for the strobe lights positioned in the same section. And again, if you don't have access to the Aero Team pack, you can use the Acacia button instead for the red, and the Birch button instead for the white. And if you don't have access to World Edit and can't place those in, then you can just use a polished granite slab, the red slab there, in place of that uh, slab entirely in the Aero Team pack, or again, a brick slab instead in default, and that'll just give that red coloration of the nav light there. But this is a more detailed approach that we're using here. So, now that we have those two buttons in place, we can continue on with the trailing edge. So, directly back from that last smooth stone slab right there, we're going to place one more smooth stone slab right there. Now, directly in towards the center, we're going to place two more, one and two, like this. And then once more directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, we have one top slab right there. Now, we're going to again stop here to add in some more quick detail. So, just as we did on the stabilizers here, we're going to use some more buttons for static widths on the edge of the wing right here. So, we're going to grab barriers and a stone button. And now, from these three outer ones right there, we're going to drop a barrier block down at an angle, just like this from it here, with three stone buttons on top, aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. And for the fourth one right there, in line with that smooth stone slab, we're going to place a barrier above that gap right there, and then a stone button beneath it, like so. That'll get those static widths on, on the wingtip right there, and we can throw those away. Next to carry on, we're going to grab the stone brick slab, we're going to place one stone brick slab going in towards the center right there, then directly in towards the center, two smooth stone slabs, and then one smooth stone slab in towards the center right there. Next, drop down a slab layer, directly in towards the center we have two smooth stone half slabs, like so. And now from the left block of those two, or the center block of the three exposed on that layer, we're going to again place a single temporary block right there. These will be marking out the flap track fairings, which we'll be again returning to after we finish the wing itself. Next, returning to these smooth stone slabs here, we have again two smooth stone slabs in towards the center. Then directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, and we have one top slab right there. Behind this one, that's going to be two temporary blocks going back, right there. Then returning to the smooth stone, we have three smooth stone top slabs in towards the center, right there. Next, we have one smooth stone top slab in towards the center, right there. Then directly in towards the center, drop down a slab layer, and we have three half slabs going in right here. One, two, and three. From the left block of these three right here, we're going to place one more temporary block right there for our third and final flap track fairing. And then finally, moment of truth, from that smooth stone slab right there, we're going to drop down a slab layer, and directly in towards the center, we have two smooth stone top slabs right there. And if all went well, that should line up right there with that last smooth stone top slab at the trailing edge of the wing root outline there. So, hopefully that all lined up for you. I know these can be a bit tricky though, so if you need it, here's an overview of the entire wing outline. Just pause if you need another look at anything. But once you have the whole thing straightened out, then we can continue with the top surface layering. So, for this, we're going to first grab the polished granite and quartz slabs again, and we're going to come to the overwing exit right here. So, out to the side of this first quartz slab right there, we're going to place four polished granite slabs going back. One, two, three, and four. It should be directly out at an angle from that one there. And then we'll next place a smooth stone top slab down a slab layer right there, with a red carpet on top of it this time to finish off the overwing exit marking there. Next, for the layering outlines, we're going to come to this uh, last polished granite slab that we placed right there. We're going to place a single smooth stone slab diagonal to it right there. You'll see how it's going to connect up with that slab from the trailing edge right there. And this is just what we're going to be doing the whole way around, connecting up each of these layers so we have a flat surface to work with. So, for our next outline here, we're going to come to the leading edge. Well, let's see, first we can patch up this bit right here. So, behind those two trapdoors, we're going to place two smooth stone slabs right there. And that'll finish up that entire layer right there. So, for the next layer up on the leading edge right there, where we have that uh, stone top slab, right next to the engine pylon. We're going to switch over to the stone brick slabs. We're going to place two stone brick slabs going back at an angle, just like this. And then going out this time, two stone slabs or stone brick slabs going back right there. And that'll meet up with that smooth stone slab right there at the trailing edge. For our next layer out, going to this stone slab here, we're going to place two stone brick slabs going back right here. Then one stone brick slab diagonal going out this time. Oops then one more stone brick slab going out diagonally, right there. 
for our next layer up right here, coming to this stone slab, we're going to place a single stone brick slab going back right there. And then going out this time, one more stone brick slab going out. For our final layer right here, from this stone slab, we're going to place a single smooth stone slab diagonal to it right there. And then going out this time, one stone brick slab going back. Just like that. That'll connect up with trailing edge there, and that's all the layering outlines in place. Next, before we fill in the top surface here, there are just a few more parts we need to mark out with the smooth stone here, where the dark marking doesn't extend to. So coming to these two smooth stone slabs that we placed right there behind the two trapdoors, we're going to place two more behind those two uh, stone slabs right there. Then going out right here, two more behind these two, uh, the stone slab and the smooth stone full block there. Then two more behind these stone slabs. You see the pattern here? We're just going to extend this all the way out to the wingtip right here. So behind every single one of these, we're going to place one more smooth stone slab. So two smooth stone slabs there, one smooth stone slab there, two slabs there, two slabs there, two slabs there. One is already in place right there with that uh, layering outline there. So then one more behind that stone slab there, and then two there filling in that outermost layer. Next, all of this can be filled in with the stone brick slab. So everywhere that's within the layering outline of a given layer and the outline of the next layer up is just going to get filled in with the stone brick slabs. That's going to look just like this. So everything in here is going to get filled in with the stone brick slabs. And this section, and this section, and here's our final layering outline there. And with that, that's the top surface of the wing done. So next, we're just going to do the same thing all over again on the underside right here to fill in this, since, as you'll see, it's looking a little bit hollow. So down at the base of the wing right here, we're going to drop a... Yeah, let's see. So for our very first layering outline right there, where we have that smooth stone slab, we're going to place one more smooth stone slab going out right there. Then directly behind, three stone brick slabs going back. One, two, and three. And then one smooth stone slab behind that there. For our next layer right here, we have that uh, stone slab there. We're going to place one smooth stone slab behind it there. Then a stone brick slab behind it. Then four stone brick slabs going out right here. One, two, three, and four. And that'll connect up diagonally with that smooth stone slab right there. Next, for our next layer out right here, we have that stone slab and the smooth stone slab behind it. We're going to place one more stone brick slab right there behind it, and then three stone brick slabs going back right here. One, two, and three. That'll connect up with that smooth stone slab right there. For our next layer out, where we have this stone slab and the smooth stone slab behind it, we're going to place a smooth stone slab diagonal to that right there, with a stone brick slab going back right there, and then two smooth stone slabs going out right there. That'll connect up with that stone slab from the trailing edge. For the next layer out, where we have this stone slab and the smooth stone slab behind it there, We'll place one smooth stone slab going out there, and then a single stone brick slab directly behind it right there. For our final layering outline here, where we have this stone slab, we're going to place a single smooth stone slab behind it there, and then another smooth stone slab diagonal to it right there. So to fill in the underside now, we have just one single smooth stone slab to block off. At the base of the wing root right here, on the trailing edge, where we have this little indentation in the first layer exposed, we're going to place a single smooth stone slab right there beneath that one from the next layer up. Next, all of these surfaces can be filled in with the stone brick slab. So again, everywhere that's in, within the outline of the current layer and the next layer previously, well, <laughs> the layer in right there, that's just going to get filled in with the stone brick slabs, like so. So three there, one there, stone brick slabs there, a stone brick slab there, and that is the underside done. So for some final detailing on the surface of the wing now, we're going to grab the acacia button. On the outer edge of the wing right here, on this final layer right here, where we have this smooth stone slab from the outer layer right there, in front of those two, we're going to place one acacia button aligned parallel with the aircraft, just like this. Then coming in towards the base of the wing right here, on the final layer in right here, where we have these two stone brick slabs, on this outer one there, we're going to place another acacia button parallel with the aircraft. Then on the inner block of those uh, stone bricks there, we're going to place a temporary block beneath that stone brick right there, and then one more going forwards. Uh, behind this temporary block right there, we're going to place a lever, flute facing up, just like this. Slip that and paste over the rear one right there. Again, make sure it's flute facing up there. And then 
on the front of this temporary block there, we'll place a jungle button, select that, and then paste over, like so. This will be for the extendable landing light embedded in the wing root there. And that's for the last detailing on the top surface here. We'll come up to the second main layer, technically the third, given this bit right here. So we have the single layer right here, the second layer, then the third layer right here, in line with the engine pylon. We're going to grab the birch button, and on this final outside edge of this layer right here, adjacent to those two stone birch slabs there, we're going to place a birch button on top of that stone birch slab there, aligned parallel with the aircraft, like this. This is for the small yellow hook that's the mounting point for the emergency evacuation slides. And then for the last detail here, on the second layer in, so we have this outer layer right there, and then the second layer down from it right there. Uh, adjacent to this stone brick slab right there, at the edge of that layering outline, we have these two uh, smooth stone slabs right there. On the outer one, we're going to place a jungle button aligned perpendicular to the aircraft, like this. So with that, that is the main geometry of the wing done, and we can now continue on with the engine pylon that I mentioned earlier. So for this, what we're going to do is where we have these two temporary blocks, we're going to knock out this topmost one right there and replace it with a smooth stone slab. We have another smooth stone slab going forwards right there, with a spruce trapdoor in front of it there. Next, going back here, we're going to turn the smooth stone top slab into a full block there. Then place three stone brick slabs going back, one, two, and three. And this final uh, smooth stone top slab right there, we're going to replace that and turn it into a smooth sandstone upside down stair right there. This will be facing in towards the center of the aircraft. Now, in the Aero Team pack here, this is a smooth stone texture like this. Just use another stone brick in default, probably, that'll be the closest match. But that stair corner there is just for the much smaller flap track fairing that extends from the base of the uh, engine pylon right there. So, with that done, that's the uh, engine pylon in place, so we can clear out that last temporary block there and work our way out with the actual flap track fairings now. So, for this, we'll be starting from the inside right here this innermost temporary block there. Underneath this, we're going to place a stone brick, or a, a smooth stone top slab, rather. Then we have three more going forwards. One, two, and three. That'll give you four smooth stone top slabs right there. And that's the innermost flap track fairing in place. Our next one out is technically that one we already accomplished with the engine pylon. So for our next temporary block marker out right there, where we have these uh, two temporary blocks, we're going to delete the four most of the two temporary blocks. And in front of the remaining one, we'll place down a smooth stone half slab right there, followed by three more. One, two, and three. Oops. Three. There we go. And then to finish this off, one single top slab left right there. For our final temporary block right here, underneath that temporary block, we're going to place a smooth stone top slab, followed by two more going forwards, and then a jungle trapdoor forwards from that there. Or again, iron trapdoor in default. I can't remember if we've used the uh, smooth stone trapdoor already in this tutorial, but in the Aero Team pack, the jungle trapdoor there is a smooth stone texture just like this to blend with our wing material here. Again, otherwise, iron trapdoor on default. But with that, that is all three flap track fairings in place, four counting the pylon, and we can clear out these temporary blots now. So, one, two, and three, and that is everything for the wing. So, what we're going to be doing next is just mirroring this entire wing on over to the right side of the aircraft. If you have World Edit, you can do this by placing a block diagonally to the wing right there. Make sure to include the buttons right there. Select that with the axe by left-clicking on it right there. Then bring the second position down here to the root of the wing. Make sure to extend below the surface to get all of those details at the wing root there. And then right-click on it to set the second position. Next, we'll come to the center of the aircraft right here. Make sure it's aligned with the center. You don't want to misalign this. Face perpendicular to the aircraft right here, out to the right side. Type slash slash copy to copy that whole section to the clipboard. Slash slash flip to flip it horizontally. And then slash slash paste to paste it onto the right side. Now, if you don't have access to World Edit, you are going to have to rebuild this by hand. Due to the sheer size of our wing, sometimes I'm not able to record these on camera. But you can find a timestamp back to the start of the wing in the video description below, and then just build the entire thing in mirror fashion on the right side of the aircraft. And since that can be a bit difficult, I'll give a quick overview here that you can pause and cross-reference to in case you need it at any point. But either way around, just make sure your wing is flipped over to the right side of the aircraft here. Once that's done, you can check back here, and here's a quick overview of it to make sure that everything's all lining up correctly. 
and the underside surface as well. But with that wing in place then, the last thing we're going to do is grab the crimson button and we're going to knock out that dark oak button on the front of that uh, wing tip right there and we'll replace it with a crimson button facing forwards right there for the green nav light on the right side of the aircraft. Now, if you don't have the aero team pack here and don't have a green button in place of the crimson texture, then you can just use the uh, a slab instead, probably either the warped wood or the dark prismarine instead, and that'll give you the green texture there on the right wing tip. So, with that done, that is everything for the wings. Alright, so next up here, we'll be building the wingtip fences. Now, as mentioned back in the introduction section of the tutorial, if you are building the A320-100 without winglets, then you won't be building these at all, and you'll be leaving this wingtip as it is. So, what you'll be doing next is just using the timestamps in the video description below to skip ahead to the engine section. And again, as mentioned at the start, you'll be wanting to use the CFM-56 5A engines. So, since those are an extension onto the 5B, you'll be skipping ahead to the uh, section building the CFM-56 5B engines, which immediately follows this and the shortlets, and then making sure to follow the 5A conversion afterwards. So, skip on ahead to that, and I will see you then. Otherwise, if you are not building the wingtip fences, but instead building the shortlets, you can also find those in the timestamps below. Otherwise, let's get going on those wingtip fences. So, for this here, we're going to come to the very last corner smooth stone slab right there in the outermost layer. We're going to knock that out and replace it with a wool half slab there. Next, we're going to clear out that outermost um, uh, static wick right there, the stone button, and then place a top slab going back right there. And then for the bottom corner of the little triangular shape of these uh, wingtip fences here, we're going to place a single wool top slab beneath that forwardmost half slab there. And then to replace that outermost static wick, which will now be extending from the uh, wingtip fence itself now instead of the wing structure, we're going to select this stone button right here that's on the underside of that barrier, the innermost one there. We'll select that, place a temporary block back from that top slab right there, and then paste that over right there. And again, if you don't have access to world edit and can't use details such as that, you can just leave that one out. But that does help to increase the level of detail. So with that, that's it for the wingtip fence here. So we'll build the same thing on the right side of the aircraft now. So where we have that smooth stone slab, knock that out, replace that with a wool slab, knock out the static wick behind it, top slab out an angle right there, top slab below, temporary block behind the top slab, and then paste over the static wick. And that is everything for the wingtip fences. All right, so next up here, we have the shortlets. Now, again, if you are building just the wingtip fences there without the shortlets, then you'll be using the timestamps below to skip ahead to the engines, whichever you'll be using for this aircraft. Otherwise, to build the shortlets here, we're going to come to this outermost layer right here of those two smooth stone top slabs there. We're going to knock out those two slabs, as well as that static wick there, the outermost one. Uh, and out to the side of this middle of the three smooth stone slabs there, we're going to place a single wool top slab right there. It should be behind the white button from the strobe lights. Then another white uh, top slab going back there. On top of the foremost one, a birch trapdoor on the bottom half there, or again, iron trapdoor in default. Then a wool block behind that right there. And then going back from this here, a dead brain coral fan. Now in the air team pad here, this is a wool vertical slab like this. In default, if you don't have these vertical slabs here, you can use an upside down quartz stair instead, but the shaping will just be a little bit less accurate. So this is what we're using here. So, from that vertical slab then, we're going to place a wolf full block going out from it right there. On its front face, we're going to have a birch trapdoor closed against it. And then, on top of this here, we're going to place a temporary block going directly up right there, with a dead brain coral fan on the rear half right there. Another one on the forward half of that right there. This time we're going to select it with world edit, clear it out, and then paste over that temporary block. That'll give you a single one-by-one -one box right there, centered between two lock layers right there, and that'll just finish off the curvature of the sharklet there. So, all that's left to do now is just build that on the right side of the aircraft here. So, right wing tip, clear out those two smooth stone slabs there, and that static wick. Behind that white button, drop a white top slab there, one more going back from it. A wolf full block on top right there, 
a birch trapdoor on the bottom half right there, in front of that right there, on top of the uh, wool top slab. Dead brain twirl fan going back, then out to the side right here, we'll full block, close a trapdoor on the forward face there, then temporary block going up there, white vertical slab behind it, white vertical slab forwards from it, select the forwards one, and paste it over that temporary block there. And that will be everything for the shartlets. Alright, so for our two CFM565B engines, we'll be starting with the left one first. So to build the engine core of this here first, we're going to, well, first grab some wool slabs. Underneath that uh, stone trapdoor right there, we're going to place a single wool top slab there, and then two more going back. Next, underneath that last one, we're going to place a polished, uh, what's this, polished andesite full block to start off the engine core right here. Underneath this here, we're going to just quickly place in some blocks so we can place in an anvil. So we have a wool top slab there, and then two bottom half wool slabs going forwards there. I'll put that away now. We're going to get to the outer engine cowling later once we finish the tour. I just need to get those in so we can place this anvil right here, forwards from the polished andesite, aligned parallel with the aircraft like this. And then one more polished andesite going forwards right there. Next, to build the fan of the engine, we're going to grab the polished blackstone. We're going to place a polished blackstone full block forwards from that polished andesite right there, with a player head on the front. Now, this is a player head that we use on the server from the HeadsDB plugin. It's a black wool texture like this. If you're in, uh, well, if you don't have access to commands or a head database or anything, you can just use a wither skeleton stole in its place there. But if you do have a, a heads database, whether on a server or online, then you can find a, a command for a black wool head like this. But otherwise, just get something in place there, either that or the wither skeleton skull for the spinner in the center of the intake fan there. Then to finish off this intake fan, from this polished blackstone here, above it we're going to place a, uh, an upside down polished blackstone stair facing to the right, like this. Then to the right of this uh, blackstone full block, a uh, polished blackstone upside down stairs facing in towards the center, right there. Then a regular stair facing to the left, like this. And then to the left of this here, a regular stair facing to the right, like so. This will start off the spinny branches of the blade structure here. We'll continue working on it after we finish the entire engine with world edit, but since building the engine will deliver block updates and break the corner stairs, we'll get to that later. So just don't worry about that for now. So next up here, we're going to grab the smooth stone. We're going to place in the uh, intake cowling right here. So let's start from this bottom stair right here. Forwards from this, we're going to place a smooth stone half slab there. Then out to the sides here, an upside down smooth sandstone stair. Again, that's the smooth stone stair, like this in the aero team pad here. Again, you can just use the stone brick in default instead. Then on top of this here, we're going to place a temporary block on top of it there, another one going up. We're going to place a dead tube coral fan on the left side of this temporary block there. Select that, and then paste over that first temporary block there. This is a smooth stone vertical slab here in the aero team pad. If you don't have access to this here, you can just use a smooth stone full block in its place, like so. But this is what we're using here for more accurate curvature. Next, on top of this here, a smooth stone stair facing to the right, like this. Smooth stone top slab there. A regular smooth stone stair facing to the left right there. Then a temporary block below for a dead tube coral fan on the right side of a block right there. Paste it over like this for the vertical slab on the left side this time. Then an upside down smooth sandstone stair facing to the left, like so. So this will finish off the intake cowling here, the grey unpainted portion of the engine cowling at the leading edge there for the anti-icing. And with this we can continue on with the engine cowling itself. So I'll throw these away here, and we'll grab our wool materials again. So let's see, going back from the top left right here, we're going to place two wool lots going back right there. Next, beneath both, uh, well, <laughs> beneath that stair there, back from this upside down stair, we're going to again place two wool full blocks right there. Then, with the quartz, we're going to place a quartz top slab right there, and then behind the top row, a uh, quartz stair facing backwards right there. This will be the outlines for the clamshell thrust reversers here. On the CFM56 engine, or it's A320 variant at least, instead of the traditional cascading thrust reverser style, where the entire aft section of the engine cowling extends backwards to redirect airflow forwards, that airflow redirection is accomplished with, instead, four tiny clamshell sections that extend outwards. So, very cool design. Let's continuing on here, behind this, 
we're going to place a wool slab behind that quartz stair there, and a wool top slab behind the quartz top slab. Then, in this space right here, we're going to place three temporary blocks right there, with one more going back there. To the right side here, we're going to place a dead brain coral fan, again the white wool vertical slab. So that'll be on the left side of that block right there. We're going to select that, and then uh, clear out that last temporary block, and paste it over all three of those right there. So what that will allow you to do is see right down the center of the engine right there. And then next here, we're going to switch over to the uh, birch trapdoor. To the side of this exposed blackstone uh, block right there, we're going to place a birch trapdoor closed against the side there, and then one more going back there. Looks like we'll have to replace that uh, uh, vertical slab that broke right there since it got a block update there. But that'll just finish off the curvature of the outside edge right there. Then underneath this here, what we can do is drop down, and underneath that uh, polished blackstone stair there, we're going to place, again, two more birch trap doors going back there. And then for the inside of the engine cowling here, it's going to be much the same story. It's entirely symmetrical here. So, two blocks of wool going back right there, a quartz top slab there, and a wool top slab. Then two blocks of wool there, a quartz stair this time, and a wool stair there. I'll get that uh, trapdoor placed in before this time so I don't mess that up again. But we have those two birch trapdoors closed against the sides right there. Three temporary blocks going back, one more right there. Grab the dead brain coral fan on the right half side of the block right there this time. Clear out that last one, and then paste over one, two, and three. Three, there we go, right there. So that'll finish off the main cowling right there. Next, we're going to grab the cyan terracotta as well as the diorite slab and the dark oak trapdoor. And for this bit here, we're going to place a diorite full block behind that polished andesite right there. We're going to close a dark oak trapdoor against the sides right there, and then one more beneath it right here. In the RT pack, this is again a uh, diorite texture here to blend with this. Otherwise, you can just use uh, iron trapdoors in default with stone bricks instead there. But then we have another diorite full block going back right there to finish off the exhaust cone there. Then above this here, we're going to place two blocks of cyan terracotta right there. And then, behind this, we're going to place a smooth stone full block there, with a spruce trapdoor on the underside for the uh, darkened uh, portion on the underside of the uh, <laughs> pylon right there. And then behind the smooth stone full block right there, an upside down smooth stone stair facing backwards like, there, uh, like that to connect in with the engine pylon. So, lastly here, we're going to place a stone button to each side of this second uh, cyan terracotta right there, on the left and right sides for the squib bottle doors right there. And then out to the sides of the forward most one right there, we're going to place a birch trap door on the bottom half right there, on the left and right, for the little tiny bit of the engine cowling that extends in to blend with the engine pylon there. Now for some final detailing on the engine cowling here, we're going to grab the polished blackstone button, and for some vents on the underside of this engine here, from these rows of two on the underside with the full blocks of wool, on the second block back, we're going to place a polished blackstone button right there, aligned parallel with the aircraft. And same thing on the inboard side, right there. Next, with the stone button, from the same row of two right there, from the forward block this time, we're going to place a stone button on the outside, right there, for some more vents. Next, we'll switch over to the dark oak button, and this will go out to the side of the second wool full block back right there, just like this. This is instead the red markings for the danger zone when the engine is running. And we'll do the same thing on the inboard side right there. So, behind the stone button there, dark oak button out to the side. And then finally, we're going to grab a carpet. A white carpet on top of that polished flat stone stair right there exposed. And that'll blend that in with the engine pylon there. So now for the very last detail. This one is optional, actually. So, the uh, CF-56 engine has two straights on the inboard and outboard edges right here. We'll be representing these with a birch trapdoor on the bottom half outwards from the uh, forward block of those two exposed on the top half right there. So, again, on the inboard side right there, on one on the bottom half there. Now these, as I said, are aerodynamic straights on the cowling here, but not all operators use them. So, if you're building a replica of a real aircraft, you should probably have a look to check whether they use the straights or not. It's pretty obvious when it's on the aircraft there. If they don't have the straights, then you can just leave them off. But otherwise, if they do, or if you would like to include them if you're just building for fun, then you can place those there. The choice is yours. Otherwise, once that's all done there, that is everything for the CFM-D65B. So, we'll just be doing the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here. So, let me scroll back up on my references, and... From the stone trapdoor right there, 
We have three wool top slabs going back right there. Now my inventory has gotten all jumbled. I'll see what I can do to make this still somewhat smooth. So, polished andesite full block beneath the rearmost top slab right there. Then with the top slabs again, one more below, and then two more going forwards there. Forwards from the andesite, anvil, parallel with the aircraft, and one more polished andesite there. Next, we'll grab the blackstone. We have a polished blackstone full block there, with the uh, black wool head on the front for the intake spinner. Then we have an upside down stair on top, facing to the right, an upside down stair to the right, facing to the left, right there. Oops. Come on. There we go. Then a regular stair underneath, facing to the left, and a regular stair to the left, facing right, making a shape looking just like that. Next for the intake cowling, we have a smooth stone slab going forward from the bottom block right there. Upside down stair out to either side. On top of this here, we're going to grab our uh, dead tube coral fans. We have one on the right half of the block, on the right side right there, and one on the left side of the block on the left side right there. Next, the smooth sandstone stairs facing to the left and right. And I keep getting rid of the blocks I need most. Whoops. Smooth stone stair, or the slab rather, on the top half right there between that to finish off the intake cowling there. Next, on the, uh, well, going back from the stairs right here, two wool full blocks on all four corners. One, two, and one, and two. On the bottom blocks here, this will be a quartz top slab going back with a wool top slab there. On the top two blocks, a quartz stair facing backwards, and a wool stair, or wool slab on the bottom half right there. Next, our two trapdoors on the underside, underneath the polished blackstone there, and one more going back. Then on the sides to finish off this curvature here, one closed against the stair there, and one going back from it there. And on the inboard side, one closed against there, and one going back. And on top here, to close this off, one single carpet there. Next we have our dead brain coral fans, so three temporary blocks going back right there, one more in the uh, well, back from it there. A white wool vertical slab on the left side of the block there. Select that, clear out the temporary block, and paste over one, two, and three. And on the right side, three temporary blocks, one more going back. White wool vertical slab on the right half of the block. Select that, clear out the temporary block, and then paste over one, two, and three. Like so. Next, we'll place in that diorite full block with one more going back. And close dark oak trapdoors against the left and right edges and the underside there. We have the two cyan terracotta on top. Two stone buttons out to either side of the rear block right there, with a birch trapdoor on the bottom half, out to either side of that forward one there. Then a smooth stone full block going back, with a stone trapdoor on the underside there, and a smooth sandstone stair facing backwards right there. And finally, for our last bits of detailing, we'll grab those buttons all over again, and we'll place the two polished blackstone buttons. Again, these will be on the back block of the two exposed on the underside right there and parallel with the aircraft right there, one and two. And then from these two on the sides, we have a stone button on the front and a dark oak button on the rear. Stone on the front, red on the rear. And then the straights, whether you're including them or not. If you're including them, they'll be on the bottom half of that for most of the two wall blocks right there. And then finally, what we can do here is use some world edit tricks to add a little bit more depth to the intake fan right here. So, grabbing the polished blackstone stairs here, if you have access to world edit, or the uh, debug stick in vanilla, what you can do is, well, for the left stair right here, place another stair facing to the right, just like that one there, but then corner it off with a stair facing to the front, like this. We'll select that with world edit, and then paste it over, like so. So I'll just add a little bit more depth to the fan, and we're going to do that the whole way around right here. So, set down stair facing to the right there, corner it off, select that, and then paste it over. Upside down stair facing to the left, select that, oop, Corner it off first, select that, and paste it over right there. And then a regular stair facing to the left, corner that off, select that, and paste it over right there. We can clear out that monstrosity now, and then repeat the same process on the left side of the aircraft. So, regular stair there, corner it off, select that, paste it over. Upside down stair, corner it off, select that, paste over. Uh, regular stair facing to the right, Corner that off, select that, paste over. I said regular, that's an upside down stair, of course, my bad. 
and then a regular stair. This time a regular stair facing to the left, or yeah, to the left. Corner it off, select that, and then paste over like so. And again, if you don't have access to World Edit and can't include those, it's not too crucial of a detail, but it does help to improve the look of the fan so it's not so gappy. And with that, that is everything for the CFM56 5B. Alright, so next up here we'll be converting these into the CFM56 5A. Now if you're only using the 5Bs as your engine, then you of course won't be following this section of the conversion, and you can skip ahead to the interior with the timestamps below. Now, if you are using the 5As, just in case you missed it in the introduction section of the video, this will be a conversion off of the 5Bs since it's just a very small change to make. So make sure that you have your two sets of the CF-56 5B ready to go right here. So what we're going to do for this here is drop down to the right side of the engine, where we have these two exposed wool blocks on the bottom right corner. This forward most one there, we're going to clear out that stone button and the wool full block there. We're going to replace that with a, uh, an andesite full block there, and an acacia button on the right side there. Next, we'll be grabbing the stone button, and we're going to come up here. We're going to, on the right side of these two exposed wool blocks right here, we're, uh, from the rearmost one there, we're going to place a stone button right there. So this will be for an added series of vents on the cowling here to be more accurate to the 5A, including that uh, andesite there for a very large set of vents on the lower right corner that's characteristic to the 5A. And uh, once that's done, all that's left to do now is to make sure that this engine has no streaks. So the CF-56 5A engine does not have straights, to my knowledge at least. So where we have those two birch trapdoors, if you did include them, make sure to clear them out. And if you did not include them, then there it is. That's the CF-56 5A in place. So we'll do the same thing on the right side here. So clear out the straights if they were there already. Where we have those two blocks on the bottom right corner of the engine here. This is not symmetrical. So uh, it's still on the right side of the engine here on the right side of the aircraft. So, clear out that stone button and the white wool full block, replace that with an andesite there, an acacia button on the side there. Then up here, these two exposed wool blocks on the top right corner, from the rear one, stone button out to the side right there. And that's everything for the CF-56 5A. Alright, so for our two IAEV 2500 engines, we'll be starting at the left engine pylon first here. Underneath the stone trapdoor, we'll place a single wool top slab right there, followed by two more going back, like so. Next, underneath that rearmost wool top slab there, we'll place a single coal ore there, followed by one more going back. In the RTM pack here, this is this grey grilled texture you see here. In default, you can probably just use diorite. Uh, not diorite, andesite, my apologies. Diorite will look significantly worse. But, speaking of which, we'll switch over to that andesite here. We'll place two more polished andesite below that, right there, followed by two more wool half slabs going forwards, like so. That's to allow us there to place a single anvil on top of the rearmost block right there, forwards from the coal ore, followed by a single polished andesite forwards from that there. Next, we can start work on the intake fan right here. So for this, forwards from that polished andesite there, we'll place a single polished blackstone full block there, followed by a black wool player head on the front of that for the engine spinner. Now, this is a player head that we use here from the HeadsDB plugin on the server. If you have an equivalent plugin or an online heads database, you can use that to find a black wool or black coloration uh, player skull. Otherwise, in vanilla, you can use the wither skeleton skull instead. But this is what we're using here for better color consistency. So next, switching over to the stairs. On top of the blackstone full block now, we have an upside down stair facing to the right, like so. Then an upside down stair to the right facing to the left, like this. Then beneath this here, a regular stair facing to the left. And beside this here, a regular stair facing to the right, like so. This will start off the curvature of the blades for the intake fan here. We'll continue on this later by curving the stairs off here with World Edit after we place in the rest of the engine cowling. We can't do it before then, or the block updates will revert them to this position. So, once we have that, we'll next grab the smooth stone. And fours from the bottom stair right there, we have a smooth stone half slab. Followed by a smooth sandstone upside down stair out to either side, like so. On top of both of these here, we're going to place a temporary block. On the right one here, uh, well first we'll place a temporary block elsewhere, with a dead tube coral fan on the left block right there. In the RTM pack here, this is a smooth stone vertical slab here. We'll select that with the World Edit Replace tool there and paste it over that temporary block on the right side, like so. Now, 
uh, this is just for better uh, consistency with the circle texture. If you don't have a vertical slab here, you can probably get away with just using a smooth stone full block instead, but it'll look a little bit goofy with the uh, stretched out proportions. So if you do have access to the other team pack, this is what we're using here. And then a vertical slab on the right side there. So with that on the left side of that block, select that and then paste over like so. And we can clear out all that there. Next, a regular stair facing to the left and right on either side right there. Finish that off with a smooth stone top slab in the middle right there. That'll finish off the intake cowling there, the unpainted gray portion at the front of the engine cowling for the anti-icing. And with that, we can continue on. So, I'll switch over to the wool materials next. And let's see. First, what we're going to do is place a single white carpet on top of that top stair right there to finish that off. Next to the left of the stair, behind that smooth stone stair, we're going to place three blocks of wool going back. One, two, and three. Next, two wool half slabs going back. One and two. Next, beneath this here, four wool full blocks. One, two, three, and four. And then behind the smooth stone full block right there, we have three wool full, or not full block, the smooth stone stair rather, three wool full blocks going back. One, two, and three then an upside down wool stair, and then a wool top slab right there. In the center right there, to close off that gap from the side, we'll place a wool top slab there as well. And on the inside, it's going to be the same uh, shaping symmetrically. So three wool full blocks there, upside down stair, top slab, four wool full blocks, then three more wool full blocks going back and two half slabs there. Then to finish off the curvature on the sides here, out to the side of this uh, blackstone stair there, we'll place a single birch trapdoor there, followed by two more going back. Like so. Same thing on the inboard side. One, two, and three. And three on the underside, too, to finish off the curvature there. Once we have that, well, let's continue on with the engine exhaust here. So the uh, IAE engines use an exhaust mixer at the rear instead of having the bypass air separate from the exhaust nozzle. So for this, the exhaust nozzle here is all going to be flush with the rest of the cowling. We'll place a single diorite full block back from both of those wool full blocks there. From these two polished andesite blocks here, we have two diorite half slabs right there. And up top here, we're going to place two cyan terracottas, which I don't have in my inventory. Whoops. Two cyan terracottas going back right there. Next, we're going to grab the horn coral fan, which in the air team pack here is a uh, vertical slab to blend with the diorite texture right here. In default, you can probably just use a uh, stone brick wall instead for both of those here. But for this curvature, what we're going to do is place a temporary block in the center, Horn coral fan on either side right there. Grab a replace tool with slash repl zero to switch it over to the air replace tool and right click in the center there to open that up. Next, to finish off the exhaust cone in the center of the exhaust nozzle here, we're going to place a polished basalt block going back right there, uh, aligned parallel with the aircraft like this, so the top face is on the rear right there, followed by a single chain right there in the center. Then, finally, we're going to place one more diorite half slab on top of those full blocks right there. Then, behind this right there, a single stone button out to either side of that last exposed cyan terracotta right there for the squib bottle doors. Then we have a smooth stone full block back from that there, and then a smooth stone top slab right there, and that'll blend the pylon in with the rest of the pylon structure that we had previously. So next up for our detailing here, we're going to grab some buttons. And first off, on the outboard side right here, starting from this uh, set of three blocks on the lower left corner of the engine, we're going to place a stone button there, followed by a dark oak button, the red texture in the aero team pack here for the red danger markings when the engine is operational. And then a polished blackstone button right there. On the underside, we're going to drop down right here, and in the center of the three blocks, we have a single jungle button right there, aligned parallel with the aircraft. And then on this diorite block here, on, at the uh, exhaust, on the outside of this, on the outboard side only, not on the inboard side, we'll place a single stone button right there. Then for the inboard detailing, it's only going to be a single button. So on this row three right here of the wool, we're going to place a stone button right there. Then lastly, we have a tiny uh, aerodynamic straight on the right side of this engine right here. So for this, we're going to drop a block diagonal from that forward most block right there down into the inboard side. Uh, well, not the inboard side because it doesn't mirror. Down to the right like this. Anyways, um, we'll place a temporary block just anywhere here with a jungle button aligned perpendicular to the aircraft, like this. We'll select that with world edit, clear that out, and then paste over the temporary block, like so. Now to finish off the curvature of the engines here, 
to add a little bit more depth to the fans and ensure that you can't see all the way through this slightly obstructed engine, we're going to grab the polished blackstone stairs again, and for each of these stairs, we're going to corner them off with world edit. So, for this, we'll place a blackstone stair facing to the left, just like this, and then corner it off right there with the stair facing forwards. Select the corner stair and paste it over the left or the uh, the bottom stair right there. Next, one facing to the right, corner that off, select it, paste over that stair. Then we have one facing ups uh, upside down, facing to the right, corner that off, select it there, paste over the top one, and then one facing to the left, corner that off, select that, paste it over right there. That'll give you a fan texture looking just like that. Now, if you don't have access to WorldEdit and can't uh, corner those off with either WorldEdit or the, the debug stick, then what you can do is just instead block those off with probably black wool behind it so you can't see through the engine. But with that, I'll clear out this monstrosity out of the way here. Then, there's just one last detail we can add in here. So the V2500 has two additional aerodynamic straights on the sides of the engine here, but this was only introduced partway through its service life, so some operators have these straights and some don't. If you're using this tutorial to build a replica of a real aircraft, then you can have a look at its pictures to see whether it has those straights installed or not. But for these straights, all we're going to do is grab the birch trapdoor again, and this top row of three right here on the right side of the engine, the center of it on the right side, we're going to drop a birch trapdoor on the bottom half right there. Same thing on the left side of the engine, so those three exposed wool blocks, center block right there, trapdoor on the bottom half. And that's everything for the V2500. So, we'll just be doing the same thing on the right side of the aircraft now. So, I'll grab my materials again here. Oh, I had two of those. That's interesting. So, that trapdoor there, drop a wool top slab underneath that. Two more going back. Then, I have to scroll back in my reference pictures there. Underneath this, we have a uh, coal ore right there, with a second going back. Underneath the forward most one there, a polished andesite full block, with one more going back there then two wool half slabs on the bottom half going forwards from that. Switch over to the anvil, we have one of those going forwards from the tool right there, and a polished andesite in front of that. Then with the polished blackstone for the intake fan, polished blackstone full block there, with a wool, uh, black wool player head on the front right there. On top of this, we have an upside down stair facing to the right, like this. As an important note, some details like the intake fan here do not mirror over from left to right, so just build what I'm building here on the right side of the aircraft as well. So we have that upside down stair there facing to the right, then an upside down stair facing to the left right there. Oops. To the left, there we go, without being cornered. Then a regular stair facing to the left right there, and an upside down stair facing to the, or not an upside down stair, a regular stair facing to the right on the left side right there. That's it for the fan there. So for the intake cowling, we have a smooth stone half slab right there, for it's in the bottom block. Smooth stone upside down stairs to either side, facing outwards. Then our vertical slabs. Vertical slab on the left half of the block, select that, paste over the left one. Oops, I have to re-enable my replace tool here, since it's been a couple cuts since the last clip. I'll select that there and paste over. And the vertical slab on the right side of the block there. Select that and paste over the right one. You can clear out all those now. We have regular stairs facing outwards, and a top slab in the center right there. Next, with the wool, we have three wool full blocks going back from all of these stairs right here. So that's one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, and one, two, and three. Then four blocks going back on the sides right here. One, two, three, and four and one, two, three, and four. On the bottom right here, that's going to be an upside down stair and a top slab, upside down stair and a top slab, and then two half slabs going back right there, with another top slab in the center to close up the gap from the outside. Next, with the carpet, we'll place a single carpet on top of that exposed blackstone right there to blend in with the pylon. Then on the sides right here, three trapdoors going back in the center block from this blackstone here. One, two, and three. On the right side as well, one, two, and three. And on the underside, that's going to be one, two, and three, like so. Next, we'll place in the exhaust right here. So, direct full block back from those walls, and a half slab going up right there. 
in the center right there from that half sled. Two cyan terracottas going back right there. Then, back from the uh, andesite right here, two diorite top slabs going back. Temporary block in the center. Horn coral fans out to either side, or your stone brick walls. Then, slash ripple zero to switch that over to the replace tool with air, and right click to clear that out. Then, we'll grab the polished basalt. Temporary block there, polished basalt in the center there, and a chain in the center for the exhaust cone. Then, out to either side of that cyan terracotta there, a button on both sides there for the squib bottle doors. And then on the outside block of this die right here, not the inside but only on the outside, a stone button right there on the right side. Next we have a smooth stone full block back from the cyan terracotta there, and a smooth stone top slab to finish off the engine pylon. Then for the engine detailing here, starting on the right side, we're going to place a... Uh, starting from the front here, where we have these three wool blocks, stone button right there on the foremost block, then a dark oak button, the red button, for the danger markings, and then behind this, a polished blackstone button right there. On the underside here, we have a jungle button aligned parallel with the aircraft in the center block of the three right there. Oops, just like that. And then for the aerodynamic straight but on the right side, the small one right here. Again, this one is asymmetrical, unlike the other detailing which flips over. That uh, straight there will only be on the right side of the engine here, on this side still. So, temporary block right there, diagonal to the foremost one there. We'll place another temporary block out there, with a jungle button on the underside, perpendicular to the aircraft, like this. Select that button and paste over the temporary block. Then, on the inboard side of the engine here, it's just going to be a single stone button right there on the center block of those three. Next, we're going to drop down here, and where we have these two polished andesites right here for a vent on the underside, we're going to finish off this vent with a single stone button on the underside, aligned parallel with the aircraft like this. And I have also forgotten this on the other engine, so it's a good thing I remembered that here. So we'll just do this quickly on the left side, my apologies for missing that. But that's going to be a stone button right there on the foremost block, aligned parallel like this. Now that engine's done, and we can continue on with the right side. So. To finish off the intake fan right here, with those uh, world edit tricks, we'll just corner off all of those stairs in the same manner as we did before. So, stay right there, facing to the, uh, to the, <laughs> yeah, to the left. Corner that off with a stair facing forwards, so you have that indentation. Select that, and then paste over the bottom stair. And then just do that for all other orientations of the stair, like this. And corner that one off as well. And lastly, a regular stair facing to the right. Select that, and paste over the left stair. We can clear all that out. And lastly, the aerodynamic straights here on the top half this time. So if you are including these, uh, hey, that's a trapdoor on the bottom half in the center of those three on the left and right. Again, if you aren't including those straights, then you'll leave them out. Remembering that that one on the lower right is not optional, that's just there. But those two are, again, optional, whether you'd like to include them or not. So, just a couple things left here. We'll place a dark oak trapdoor underneath the uh, direct full blocks right there, which I unfortunately forgot when I was building that. My apologies, but very quick to add in as well. And another thing I have forgotten, or rather messed up in my notes to begin with, this last wool top slab right there should actually be a cyan terracotta full block to better blend with the engine pylon right there. Again, my apologies for missing that, uh, but luckily it's not too hard to fix there. So just replace that with a cyan terracotta, and again on the left side as well. There should only be one single exposed wool block right there in that corner. The second one back there should be a cyan terracotta full block. Well, with that all done now, that is now everything for the IAE V2500 engines. Alright, so next up here we'll be building the interior of the A320. So for this we're going to drop on into the inside of the aircraft here. We'll be starting with the cargo holds. So, we'll start up here with the forward cargo hold, where we have the cargo door right here, this 2x3 box of the quartz aligned like this. We're going to knock out these lower three quartz full blocks, 1, 2, and 3. We'll be replacing these with two quartz stairs facing towards the inside on the rear half right here, 1 and, oops, that's a trap door, 1 and 2. Then corner this off with one facing to the rear like this to cover up that uh, target block right there. 
Once we have that, we can place a wool block right there between the two target blocks to close that up. And then, on top of this uh, corner stair right there, inside of that uh, towards full block, we'll place three wool upside down stairs across the back right there to close off the forward edge of the targo hold. Next, along the sides right here, where we have these wool full blocks, we'll be first knocking out this forward one right there and replacing that with a wool stair facing backwards like this. Next, we have seven wool stairs facing towards the inside right here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Should extend two past the start of the wing box right there. Then on the right side here, back from the, the uh, cardo door, that's going to be just five stairs this time. So that's one, two, three, four, and five, like so. This will be the rear edge of the forward cargo hold right here, so we can close this up with a 2x3 box of wool. So three across the bottom right there, and then three above, like so. Next for the floor of the cargo hold right here, we're going to place a spruce trapdoor in between those two corner stairs right there. Then fill that up to the point where we reach this birch trapdoor right there. Again, as you'll remember, that was from the lever that we had to place down there, so don't open that trapdoor, it's holding it in place. Then we have two more spruce trapdoors going back right there. Again, you can use iron trapdoors in default if you don't have that stone texture. Then to close this off, we're just going to fill this entire roof in here with the wool top slabs. So bring all of this in line to the back of the cargo hold right there. Like that. And we're in business. So, for the aft cargo hold now, we'll move to the rear of the aircraft. For this one, we have these two cargo doors, the larger aft cargo door and the bolt cargo door right here. So working our way in from the rear, we're going to, right to the side of this two tall bolt uh, cargo door right here, we have that uh, wool half slab. We're going to turn that into a full block, and then place a row of three wool full blocks across the top right there to seal up the back edge. Next, we'll be, again, replacing this quartz full block right there with a quartz stair facing it towards the center, the bottom one of those two, that is. Then where we have these three wool blocks between the two doors right here, we'll be replacing those with three wool stairs facing towards the center. Then the three lower quartz full blocks right there, again, three quartz stairs facing in towards the center. Replace that single wool block there with the wool stair. Then two more going forwards. Next, where we have these three wool blocks here at the rear edge of the wheel well detailing, we'll turn that forward one on the right side into a corner stair right there, facing towards the rear. Then two more stairs facing towards the rear right there, and curve that off. And then this whole section of uh, wool full blocks right there along the side will just turn into wool stairs again to finish off the curvature of the cargo hold. Just like this. So, next up here for the floor, Forwards from these, uh, well, you'll, you'll see we have these two uh, birch trap doors right there at the rear edge of the cargo hold right there. That's just closing off the gap there where the layering on the outside starts to taper. So forwards from this here, we have a single light gray carpet. Then three spruce trap doors going forwards. One, two, and three. We'll place another light gray carpet right there. And then you see we have this uh, other birch trap door right there. We can't replace that one since that's showing through the outside again. Uh, because it's holding up the lever that's placed on the underside right there. So, leaving that one intact, then we have two more light gray carpets going forwards. Next up here, uh, across these three corner stairs at the front of the uh, cargo hold right here, we'll place three upside-down stairs right there to match up. And then the whole top here is just going to get capped off again with the wool top slabs, like so. So close this off here with the three wide box. And that's both of the cargo holds in place. So now we can move on to the cabin. All right, so for the cabin now, we'll be coming to the forward doors right here. Beneath this quartz upside down stair, we have this wool full block there. Between this, we're gonna place a row of three grave wool at that level, right beneath the door there. Next, we'll place another row of three going back and another right there to fill in that space. And we'll worry about the flight deck in a second here. First, I'll just get some of the detailing finished off at the uh, forward uh, entry right here. So, forwards from the left door right here, we're going to place a set of two smooth stone full blocks going up right there. Same thing on the right side here, so forwards from the door, two smooth stone full blocks there. We'll place a wolf full block above those right there, and a smooth stone full block in the center there. Next, a single grey wolf full block beneath that right there. 
Then we're going to grab the birch door, and we'll place a birch door against the left side of those two smooth stone right there, just like that, for the forward lavatories. Next, we're going to grab the blue banner. We're going to place a blue banner on the top half of these uh, two smooth stone full blocks right there. And then a spruce trap door closed against the bottom edge right there. And this will make the two flight attendant jump seats. Next, we're going to place a temporary block uh, to the left of the left door now, right there. We'll place a tube twirl fan, or a dead tube twirl fan rather, on the left side there. Select that with world edit, and then paste over the temporary block there. And then on top of this, that's going to be a jungle trap door closed against the top right there. This will form the forward bulkhead, separating the rest of the cabin from the entry. And if you don't have the vertical slab there, you can just use iron trap doors for those two there. Then on the right side there, same thing again. So temporary block, vertical slab on the forward half of the block, paste over there, and then a jungle trap door against the forward half, like so. Then up here above this, we're going to place a quartz upside down stair facing to the rear, like this. And then we'll corner this off with an upside down stair facing towards the center on both sides, like so. We'll continue these along later when we get to the rest of the cabin, but first we'll move ahead here and finish off the flight deck. So we're going to walk through this section here, and next we'll fill up this entire forward floor right here with gray wool again, just to fill in the floor right there, like so. Next, for the pilot and co-pilot seats, we'll grab prismarine, and forwards from both of these smooth stone rows right here, we're going to place a prismarine stair with a prismarine slab on top. In the R-Team pack here, this is a blue texture, which is closer to the pilot and co-pilot seats used in the real Airbus aircraft. But if you're in default and don't have that, then you can probably just use uh, stone bricks instead for all of your seats. Otherwise, same thing on the left side of the aircraft right here. So stair and a slab on top, like so. Then for the cabin door separating the flight deck from the rest of the cabin, we'll place that on the rear edge of that uh, gray wall right there, in between those two seats. Next, on either side here, forwards from those seats, on that single exposed wall block right there, the rearmost of those two on the bottom half, we'll place a lever right there on the inside of both of those. This is for the wall-mounted side sticks that the pilots use to control the aircraft on Airbus aircraft. Next, we'll place a... Uh, let's see, forwards from this, we have a polished andesite upside-down stair right there, facing to the rear, on the left and right, behind both of those uh, wall rows. Then a polished andesite half slab in the center between those. A black wool full block forwards from that there. And then a polished andesite half slab on top of that, in between those two uh, terracotta half slabs. And then behind both of those half slab utilities there, we'll place a single acacia button, just like that. So this will form the main instrument panel and MCP, and those little uh, indentation divots down there give the impression of the rudder controls. Then next for the pedestal, the center pedestal right here, we'll place a daylight detector behind the lower half slab of the two there. And then, oops, that'll open the door right there, we can close that again. And then right-click that to switch it over to the nighttime variant. We have a special texture for that here in the Aerotain pack, but even in default, the uh, inverted daylight detector with the uh, night detector will still have a blue coloration to it, and that's exactly what we want here for the slightly blue-colored center pedestal. So then up top here for the overhead panel, we'll place a single cobblestone half slab behind that uh, wool top slab right there, then a jungle trapdoor behind that there. Then on either side, we just have a wall top slab out to either side right there to finish off the roof of the cockpit. And that's the flight deck in place. So we can open up that door now and uh, work on the rest of the cabin in here. So for the first class seating, which will come in next here, we're going to grab the endstone brick stairs and slabs. So behind the vertical slab here, we'll be skipping this next block back. And then on the second block back, on top of that first wall top slab there, we'll place a stair facing forwards and a slab on top to form the first class seat. We use a black coloration for our first class seats in our base interior configuration here for the A320. But uh, if you're in default, the endstone bricks will of course be quite yellow, so you'll want to use nether bricks instead for these. Otherwise, on the left side is just gonna be the same right here, so a stair right there and a slab on top. And in our base configuration here, we have three rows of first class seating. So we have one row there already. We'll skip a block back, another stair right there, Slab on top, skip a block, stair right there, slab on top. That's three rows in total. Same thing on the left side, stair and slab, stair and slab. 
Next, we're going to fill in the floor right here with gray carpet. So on top of all of these wool half slabs, we'll place a gray carpet like this. And then for the uh, ceiling right here, we're going to grab quartz stairs. And these quartz upside down stairs, we're going to drag all the way back here for the overhead bins. So I'll just bring those in line with that for now. Upside down stairs through the side right there. And then in the center, going back from that smooth stone full block, that's going to be birch trapdoors on the top half, going all the way back like this. Next, for the class divider bulkhead, we're going to grab the jungle trapdoor and place two of these close against the forward edge of the next block back, against the rear face of that seat. That's one and two right there. Then we have an upside down port stair facing in towards the center on top of that there, with a birch trapdoor in the center. Now we can corner these stairs off a little bit more nicely so that they uh, have a seamless connection to the bulkheads right here. So for this, we're going to place another set of upside down stairs going back from that there, just to make sure it doesn't get any more block updates. And make sure you have those two birch trap doors in the center there to close that off, that off as well. Otherwise, if we uh, do those world edit tricks and then place in these blocks afterwards, they'll get a block update and revert back to their regular position. So now that we have those in place there, what we're going to do for this is place a stair just anywhere facing backwards. Then a stair facing to the right, like this. Grab your replace tool here, select that, and then paste over the stair right above the trapdoor, like this. Next, clear out that sideways stair, and then corner this with another stair facing to the left this time, like so. Select that corner stair again, and then again paste over the stair on the right side this time. And we can clear those two out there. And again, if you don't have world edit, you can just leave it as it is, with a little bit of a gap between, but this helps to close the gap off in a more realistic way. So. Uh, either way, now that we have that in place, what we're going to do for the next bit here is put in the economy class seating. So behind these two trapdoors right here, immediately behind it, not skipping a block, we're going to place a prismarine stair with a prismarine slab on top, like this. Again, like we did with the flight deck there, this will be our blue seating for the economy class. In default, you can just use stone bricks instead, but this is what we use for all of our base interior configurations. So. We have one seat right there already. We're going to place the same thing on the left side right there. So stair facing forwards and a slab on top. And before we continue on here, let's fill in this little section of the floor right here with the gray wool, just like this. So in line with the uh, wool top slabs and everything from the cargo holds, we'll just fill this section of the floor in with the gray wool to have somewhere to work off of now. So now that we have those two rows of uh, seating in place, this is going to go back for a total of 14 rows. So we have one there already, skip a block, Stair and slab, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, and fourteen, right there. Should line up with that smooth stone there on the right side. Same thing on the left now, so we have one seat there already. Skip a block, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, and 14. Next, we can also fill in this tiny section there with the gray wool. And then to finish off the floor here, we're going to start with a gray carpet right there between these two trapdoors. And now we're going to grab the diorite slab. We're going to replace these two wool top slabs there with a diorite top slab, since we can't place a carpet in there since that block is already occupied by the trapdoor. So now we're just going to run the gray carpet all the way down and on the gaps on the sides there as well to fill in the uh, floor there. And we can do the same thing uh, where we already have the gray wool anyways, just so that it doesn't have a uh, gap in the flooring and it's all at the same level. So bring the gray carpet all the way to the rear of the aircraft here. We'll bring it in line with the last row of seating that we placed. Just like that. And then to fill in the ceiling here, we'll just bring the same uh, design that we did for the overhead bins here all the way down as well. So, stairs facing in towards the center on the outside, and a birch trap door on the inside. This is going to go all the way down until the last row of seating that we placed again. Oops. Right there. And on the right side as well. like so, and then run the birch trapdoors all the way down as well.
perfect. Next, we'll work on the aft galley section here. So, for this bit, what we're going to do is first place another smooth stone on top of this one we already had there on the right side, like so. Then we're going to place a blue banner on the rear face of this block here, but that's going to update the uh, corner stair on this door here that we placed in when we were building the fuselage, unfortunately. So we are going to have to redo that, but uh, we'll get to that in a second here once we place these in. So, that's a blue banner on the rear face of the smooth stone, and there goes that stair. On the left side as well, that's going to be a smooth stone full block there, and another one going up, like so. And then a blue banner on the rear face there. So now we have to fix those doors again. So for this, we'll first head to the outside here. We're going to place a temporary block to the outside of that stair again, with the stone button select and paste over. Oops, didn't mean to double click paste there. Just on the outside of that stair there. And then on the right side as well or left side rather, temporary block, stone button, select and paste over. Then on the inside here, for the uh, uh, stairs there to corner those off, we'll place a regular stair facing backwards between those two slabs. And then right in front where we have that gap there, we'll place a stair facing to the left, select the corner stair, paste over the stair there, then clear out the sideways stair and another one to the right this time instead right there, select the corner stair and paste over the left stair. So, that'll do it for those doors now. Next, we'll place a wolf full block above those two smooth stone blocks there. And for the aft galley section now, right between these two wolf full blocks, right behind these uh, slabs from the door curvature here, we're going to place an upside down stone brick stair facing forwards, just like this. Then, above both of those wolf full blocks there to the sides, We'll place a, uh, an upside down stone bird stair facing forwards again, just like that on both sides there. In the gap behind these two stone bird stairs right there, right to the side of this first wool block exposed there, we're going to place a smooth stone full block right there. Then above this in the block forwards, where we have those wool blocks between the, uh, or behind the uh, court stairs, we'll place a smooth stone full block there. Next, we'll place a temporary block in that gap that's been created there and we'll grab the dead tube coral fan again. We'll place that on the left side of that uh, block there, so it's on the left half. We're going to select that with world edit and then paste over the temporary block right there. Next, we're going to place another temporary block going forwards from that there. We'll select the acacia button this time, select that, and then paste over the temporary block there. Then finally, above this right here, uh, on the face of that um, smooth stone full block there, we're going to place a stone button right there. Now, if you don't have the vertical slab there, you can probably just use a full block in that space, or maybe a regular stair facing to the right or something. But either way, this will finish off the detailing of the aft galley here. So all we have to do now is just place a birch trapdoor uh, on the top half between those two wool blocks there to fill in the ceiling, then grab the gray carpet and place two of those there in line with the aft doors here to fill in the floor. And with that, that is everything for the interior of the Airbus A320. So. With the interior done now, that is everything for the in-flight aircraft. If you're building this landed on the ground, we will next be building the landing gear. But if you're building this in-flight with the landing gear retracted, then that is everything for this tutorial. Congratulations! Just skip on ahead to the outro section for some last important information, and I will see you then. Otherwise, let's get going on the landing gear. Alright, so we'll be starting out here with the nose gear. So come down to the nose gear door right here, at the very base of the first layer, where we have these two quartz full blocks right there, in front of the birch trapdoor. We're going to be knocking both of these out right there. We're going to replace that first one with a quartz full block right there. Then the next one behind it with a quartz half slab on the bottom half. Next, clear out this trapdoor right there, the first one in that layer, as well as this row of three following it, right there. Then. Above that uh, first exposed birch trapdoor right there, we're going to place a single wolf full block there to close in that gap. In front of that, in the rear block of those two that are exposed there, we're going to place a stone brick wall there, with one more going down from it. Next in this gap up here, an iron bar, followed by another iron bar going down, like so. Next, beneath the um, stone brick wall right there, we're going to place a crimson fence going down like this. In the Aero Team pack here, this is a stone texture on the wall. You can probably just use either another stone brick wall in default, or maybe a birch uh, fence or something. 
But then underneath this here, we're going to be placing in the wheel. Now for the wheel here, we're using a custom model. This is on the torus flower, so or a custom texture, I should say, rather. So for this, we're going to place down an end stone just anywhere with a torus flower on top of it like this. It's been retextured with solid black wool right here to give it this more wheel-like shape. Now, these can't be just placed on any old block, unfortunately, so we're going to select this with world edit, then place a temporary block underneath that fence and paste it over in just like this. Now, if you don't have this retextured torus flower in default, you can just use a black wool full block instead. But this is what we're using right here for a little bit more detail. So we can clear those out. Next, we're going to place a temporary block to either side of it right here. On the left block right here, we're going to place a stone button on the left face. Select that, and then paste over for the wheel rims. Same thing on the right side, like so. And if you're in default without the coarse flower, you can just place those in on the sides without world edit on a black wool block. Next up here, we're going to place a quartz stair, an upside down quartz stair, out to either side of that uh, um, stone brick wall right there, facing the outside just like this for the opened gear doors on the sides there. Then to the sides of this fence right there, we're going to place another temporary block set, like so. And then out to the sides here, a torch. Select that and then paste over. Again, select the torch and paste over there. These are for the runway turnoff lights on the side of the uh, nose gear right here. And then to the forward and back, we're again going to place a uh, temporary block set, just like this. And on these faces, it's instead going to be a stone button. So, stone button on the rear face right there. Select that, and then paste over. Select the button, and then paste over. Finally, we can use World Edit to flush off these uh, walls a little bit more nicely. So first, we'll start with this fence down here. For this, we're going to add side connections to all four sides to both connect up with those details and give it a little bit more bulk. So we're going to make a cross pattern with the crimson fence right there, with one in the center and one on all four sides, like this. We'll select that center one right there, and then paste over the fence, like so. Then for this bottom stone brick wall right there, we're going to get rid of those side connections there to give it a little bit more space from the gear doors. So for this, we can clear out those fences there, and we're going to place just two stone brick walls back to back, just like this. We'll select the rear one right there, and then paste over that bottom stone brick wall right there. So it still has that connection to the iron bar, but then uh, removes the connections to the uh, gear doors there. And then finally, since these iron bars represent the diagonal drag strut, we can connect this top one off there to the front to give it a little bit more curvature there. So for this, it's just going to be three iron bars, back to back like this, parallel with the aircraft. We'll select the center one there, and then paste over the top set of iron bars only. We'll leave the bottom one as it is there to finish off that curvature there. So with that, that's the nose gear in place. We can clear out all of those now, and continue on with the main landing gear. So, we'll be coming to the base of the wing right here, we'll be starting on the left side, and where we have these two smooth stone blocks there, right behind the stone brick blocks, we were going to clear out these two there, as well as this smooth stone block to the right of it, and then from this stone brick slab that's left right there, we're going to place another smooth stone slab to the left of it, like so. Next, going out from that slab that we just placed there, we're going to knock out this stone brick top slab there, as well as the stone brick or smooth stone slab to the right of it, right here. In place of that smooth stone slab that we knocked out right there in that rear gap, we're going to place three stone brick walls going down. One, two, and three. Like so. Next, a stone brick top slab right below that wall. This will start off the shock strut here and the bogey beneath it. Next, for the wheels, we're going to place a nether brick stair to the left side of that slab there, facing backwards, like this. On its rear face right here, we're going to place a temporary block, and then a dead fire coral fan there on the rear face of that. Select it, and then paste over. Then on top of this stair here, we're going to grab the light blue glazed terracotta, and we're looking for the orientation where we have the black wool slab on the bottom, and the smooth stone slab on the top. So that is right here. For me, that's facing to the left of the aircraft. So just find which one that is for you, and we're going to place that right on top of the stair, like so. So this will give you a uh, half slab uh, circle like this, with a little gap in the middle there for the wheel rim, with a 1.5 by 1.5 wheel, and that's the right size we need for this scale. Now, if you're in default without either the vertical slab or this half slab model here, you can probably just use a uh, an upside down nether brick stair there, regular stair on top, and then two stairs there to finish off a 2 by 2 wheel design like this, 
but this will be less accurate to the uh, real aircraft, and will be just a little bit oversized. So instead, if you have access to the Aero Team Pack, we are again using that, uh, oops, that 1.5 by 1.5 design here for the wheel, like so. So either way, however you have your wheel in place, we're going to next place a smooth stone full block on top of that uh, smooth stone top slab utility that we placed in there, as well as one more going up in place of that stone brick slab there, then one more smooth stone forwards, and a smooth stone top slab beneath it. And then that stone brick slab right there forwards to the smooth stone full block, we'll knock that out as well and replace it with a smooth stone top slab there. So that will finish off the shape of the deer door right here. Next up, for the side braces, we're going to grab the iron bars now, and from this bottom of the three uh, uh, stone brick walls right here, we're going to place an iron bar to the inside of it, like so. An iron bar going up from it right there. Then an iron bar diagonal to it forwards and inside, just like this. And then another iron bar going up from that there. Next, we're going to grab the chains. We're going to place a chain on the rear face of that bottom of the two uh, iron bar right there, like this. Next, for the drag strut on the forward side, from the second of the three uh, stone brick walls right there, the middle one, we're going to place an iron bar on the forward side of it right there, and an iron bar going up like this. So this is a little bit of a mess of iron bars at the moment right now, and we can use World Edit to connect these off much more nicely to make a much more seamless strut design. But we need to get a few more details in first with World Edit, uh, so that they don't break the uh, World Edit connections and everything. So first, we're going to come to the uh, forward side right here. From the bottom block of these three uh, stone brick walls there, we're going to place a temporary block forwards from it there. With a stone button on the forward edge, select that, then paste over there. On the rear side here, we're going to place a temporary block behind it now, behind the same wall there, and then one more going down from it. We're going to first grab a lever, place that on the rear edge of that temporary block, flick it so it's facing downwards like this, then select that and paste over the top temporary block there. Next we'll place another temporary block just anywhere, with a stone button aligned perpendicular to the aircraft like this. We'll select that stone button, clear out that, and then paste it over the bottom temporary block there. This is for the torque link on the trailing edge of the main strut here. So now we can get to work on fixing up these iron bars here. So, uh, let's start with the uh, main shot strut, actually. So, for this, what we want is, uh, we'll start with a, another cross shape of the stone brick walls here, and then one more on top of it, and then one more on top of all four of those there, just like this. So that will get you the uh, uh, configuration of the stone brick wall there with all four side connections, as well as the gaps filled in there so it doesn't have this top bit notched out there. So we're going to select that one in the center there, and then paste it, or the, the bottom center that is, I should say, and then paste over the bottom of the walls right there. Next, we're going to clear out both of those on the left there. Actually, since we have some block updates disabled on the server, I'll just make this in a new section. So we have two like this uh, side by side, perpendicular to the aircraft here, then another set of two on top right there to fill in those notches. We're going to select the bottom left one right there this one where it has only the connection to the left-hand side of the aircraft, right there, and then paste over both the middle one and the top one there. So that will slim off the main strut here uh, while connecting it up all with the um, gear door on the side there, and then connecting this bottom one with both those detailing there and the um, side strut there too. So with the walls done now, we can next work on the uh, iron bar struts here. So. First, we're going to place two iron bars back to back, uh, parallel with the aircraft like this. We'll select the rear one right here with the forwards connection, and then paste that over the top one right there to, again, give it a little bit more of a diagonal connection there and separate it from the gear door. Now this bottom one is already in the configuration we need with just the rear connection there, but if it's not for you for whatever reason, you can just select that forward one and then paste it over right there. So now for the side brace here. This bottom one there is already in the correct configuration, with just the outside configure or connection there connecting to the bottom of the main strut. For this top one right there, we're going to place a uh, an L shape of iron bars with two uh, back to back parallel with the aircraft here, and then one to the left of the rearmost one right there. 
so it has just the connection to the forward and right side of the aircraft there. We'll select that, and then paste over the second iron bar up right there. For this next iron bar there, the one that's next to the chains, we're going to want to place uh, oops, two iron bars back to back here, with one to the left hand side of the forwardmost one right there. So it looks just like this. Select that corner iron bar there, and then paste it over that uh, bottom of the two right there. So that'll just get that kind of a little bit more uh, the illusion of connection there. And then for this top one there, we're going to place two iron bars uh, side to side, like this. And then one more going back from the left hand iron bar right there, so it makes this L shape. We'll select that corner iron bar there, and then paste it over that one, like so. So that's everything for this main landing gear here then. We're not going to do anything more in this gap, since the uh, little gap in the uh, gear door right here is exposed from the outside so you can see right through to the wheel well. So all we have to do now is clear out all of these uh, temporary setups that we constructed here for those world edit tricks, and move on to the right hand landing gear. Now again, if you don't have world edit, then you can just leave those iron bars as they were. It won't be the most realistic, but it'll still do the job. But this is why we do use World Edit here to make things much more nice. So, same thing on the right side now. We're just going to build that same landed gear in mirror fashion. I'll do this one on camera as well. So, where we have these two stone bricks there, with the two smooth stone behind it there, we'll knock out those two smooth stone there, as well as the uh, smooth stone to the left of it right there. Coming out from that right there, the smooth stone top slab that's left over, we're going to place another smooth stone top slab to the right of it, like so. Then coming out from that there, knock out that stone brick top slab there, and then behind it, that smooth stone top slab. In place of that, we're going to place a stone brick wall right there, with two more going down, and a stone brick top slab beneath it. Next, we have the wheel to place in, so nether brick stair to the right side of it right here, facing backwards. Temporary block, dead fire, coral fan, select and paste over right there. Then grab the light blue glazed terracotta. Place that on top right there, with the black wool on the bottom half and the smooth stone on the top half. Smooth stone full block going up, smooth stone top slab forwards from that there. Two smooth stone full blocks going up from both of those there, and a smooth stone top slab forwards from that. Next, for the rest of the struts, we'll grab the iron bars. For the drag brace here, we'll place an iron bar going forwards from the stone brick wall there, and one more going up. Then from the bottom wall right here, we have one more going in towards the center, one on top of it there then one diagonal towards the front, like so, and one more above it. Now before we continue fixing these connections here, we can again put in the bogey detailing here. So, uh, grab two temporary blocks here behind that bottom wall and the top slab there. Lever, flip facing down, select that, paste over the top block there, and a stone button aligned perpendicular to the aircraft here. Select that and paste over the bottom block. And on the front here, it's gonna be a temporary block right there. Stone button, select and paste over. Now we can work on those wall connections. So, again for that bottom one there, it's going to be all four side connections, as well as another set on top right there, to fill in those notches. Select the bottom one there, and paste over the bottom wall. Then, we want uh, two side by side, like this, and uh, two on top as well. We'll select the bottom right one this time, so it has just the left connection there, well, left from this view that is, and then paste over the uh, two right above it, right there. Then, for the iron bars here, we're actually going to place that chain that I missed here. So, from those two that are in towards the center there, connecting with the fuselage, a chain facing outwards, just like this, connecting those two iron bars there. Now we can connect those iron bars up. So, uh, two back to back, just like this. Select the rear one right there, paste it over the top of those two, and then select the forward one there and paste it over the bottom one, so it gives you curvature looking just like that. Then for the side brace here, this bottom one is already in the correct configuration we want. For this top one there, we're going to place a set of two uh, parallel with the aircraft like this, back to back, with one more coming off of the uh, rearmost one right there to the inside of the aircraft, like this. Select that one, and then paste it over the second one up, just like that. Then for these two right here, we're going to want uh, two iron bars parallel with the aircraft like this, then one going outwards from the forward one right there. Select that, paste over the bottom one of the two, and then for our last iron bar right here, we have, again, two parallel with the aircraft like this, and then one going inwards from the forwardmost one this time, giving you a shape looking just like that. Select the corner one there, 
and then paste over the top bar just like that. So with that, we can clear out all of these uh, temporary structures here. The iron bars and the stone brick walls. There's just one last quick little thing left to do that I missed, but uh, we need to close this stone brick wall up, or stone brick slab up there, so that we don't see through the uh, wing like this. Now, if you have used World Edit to clean up these struts here, you don't want to just turn that into a full block right there, or it'll update everything along the way. But we can again use World Edit to clean up that block without updating everything else. So for that, we're just going to turn the uh, slab in front of it into a stone brick full block there, select that, and then paste over that half slab there. That'll close everything off nicely. And we'll just do the same thing on the left side here. So that uh, exposed half slab right there where the gap is showing through. Fly up and oops, change that one there into a full block there. Now if you didn't use world edit along the way, you don't have to worry about that at all, of course, and you can just turn it into a full block otherwise. But that's just a handy little trick there to make things easier. So with that, that is everything for the landing gear of the A320. All right, so for the final section of this tutorial, as covered in the introduction, we will be building the optional double bogey configuration for the main landing gear. Now if you aren't using this, and you're just using the single wheel set, as the vast majority of A320s do, then you are done with this tutorial. Congratulations! Just skip on ahead to the outro section for some last important information, and I will see you then. Otherwise, let's build those double bogeys! Alright, so for the double bogey landing gear here, we'll be starting on the left side first where we have the uh, wheel design here created with the uh, stair and the vertical slab, we're going to knock out the vertical slab and the stair right there. Then in place of the stair, to the left of that top slab there, we're going to place in a black wool full block, with a nether brick stair facing backwards, forwards from it there, and a stair facing forwards behind it. Next, to extend out the uh, bogey right here, in front of this top slab right there, we're going to place a smooth stone top slab there, and behind it, we're going to clear out that button there and replace it with a smooth stone uh, top slab there as well. Next, to get rid of that uh, half slab uh, utility right there, if you use World Edit for the struts, you don't want to break that block there as it'll update everything along the way. So if you used World Edit for all of that, you can place a jungle trapdoor to the outside of it right here on the top half of the block, select it, and then paste over right there. Otherwise, if you didn't use World Edit for any of that, you can just break it and replace it without worry. But either way, you want a uh, gentle trapdoor on the top half of the block right there, or again, iron trapdoor in default. Then to finish off the wheels here, it's just a nether brick half slab on top of both of those stairs right there. So you have these two 1.5 by 1.5 wheel designs stacked right next to each other, like this. And we'll just do the same thing on the right side of the aircraft here. So, knock out the vertical slab on the stair there, paste that trapdoor over the uh, half block utility, then a stone brick or smooth stone top slab behind the uh, stone brick top slab and one in front of it as well. Uh, another brick full block or black wool full block out from the uh, smooth stone <laughs> stone brick top slab right there. Another brick stair facing backwards, forwards from that, and a stair facing forwards behind it right there. Half slab on top of each, and that is everything for the double bogey landing gear. And the A320 is done. So congratulations on completing the Airbus A320. Thank you so much for choosing an AeroTeam design. We hope that you enjoyed building it, and we hope that you enjoy having it as a part of your Minecraft world. Do feel free to use this in any kind of publicly available project you like, given that you, of course, provide proper credit to the AeroTeam for these designs. So, if you have built this aircraft, let us know. We'd love to see how you're using our designs. A link to our Discord server is in the video description below. Feel free to drop on in and show us what you've done. If you enjoyed, Please do consider subscribing to the Air Team channel to be the first to see our new aircraft when they come out. Make sure to have a look through the 1.5 to 1 scale playlist on our channel as well for more builds in the scale to see if there's anything else that catches your interest. Anyways, that is just about it. So, thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you in the next one.